It is a warm day in Adelaide, so if you're watching outside of South Australia, it's about 30 degrees here today. It's a warm one, but a fantastic crowd in Paddy. I think this yeah. is, we're, we're up close to 4,000 here, I reckon. Yeah. Maybe even a little bit more. Well, of course, last year's biggest mine around crowd was here as the Bays took on the Double Blues around on Queen's birthday, it was, actually. Um, now, aiming for 10K, got close to it. And we are here for Amy, who supports community footy. Amy does. Paul Bonzer and Paddy Goldsmith with you. And it seems just a poor player walking through the middle of the ground now. I don't think Darren's uh, he's on the Glenelg huddle. He's going to pan around beautifully now while I speak. Um, there's a man there in the middle with orange hair and pink boots. Look at him. His name is... Um, uh, Logan Evans, he's just an 18 year old and he's got some hops, we wear pink boots for nothing, <laughs> we'll keep an eye on him as well just about to get out of the way, Paddy, have you got a winner for us today? Yeah, the Bay's comfortably Bonds, what about you? Comfortably? I think it'll be a bit closer, okay, I think uh, yeah, I, like, I like the Bay's at home but uh, I think Port will put it up to him early not a bad, uh, not a bad side for Adelaide today, and also in the ruck, Jordan Sweet comes in. Yes. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Not far away from a start, Paddy. I think you can get amongst us and uh, get amongst it and get us underway here in the first quarter. Good Friday football, Sandful football. Let's get underway for season 2024. Umpire holds the ball aloft. Paddy Goldsmith, Paul Bonzer in the commentary box this afternoon. Final game of round one. Big crowd in at the bay. Underway, no one won the tap down. Eventually firing it out was Cam McGree, and the high ball goes up. Bell comes in, crashes through. Couldn't claim the mark, and that ball spills out, I think, under the watchful eye of Williams. McGree works his way past and then fires a handball out towards the wing again. Another handball. Spills out, Snoop, and then back through the middle of the ground. The bays go. Kicks cut off. Sweet getting down low and marking that one on the chest. Jordan Sweet on the wing. Kicks across the centre square. Nice mark taken by Will Lorenz. Got some speed. Not big in stature. He's got a lot of ability to this kid. On the left boot, inside 50. He's standing in the hole as he's done about a million times with Chris Curran in the 21. Last time we saw him in the Glenelg Guernsey, wore number five, was the captain. And Curran will come down this grandstand side, close to the boundary line, and might have been over the boundary line, goes out on the full. So Josh Byrne to bring it back in for Port Adelaide, just winds up and then inside forward 50, pack forms, gets through, but as the umpire picked out a free kick, it's going Port Adelaide's way, just switching players who's going to be the beneficiary. So the first chance at goal probably coming up from Port Adelaide. It's for Port Adelaide, rather. It's going to be a chance at goal for Tom Scully. Yeah, George Yardis tried to steal that goal <laughs> off, of, uh, off of Tom Scully, but the free kick was there to Scully. How's this for a set of numbers? 19 years old, 19 games played, 19 goals. Might kick one goal nine today. Who knows? <laughs> For his sake, he'd hope not. Scully crosses the pane of 50. Laid back on it, pushed it across the face, and a minor score to start this one for Port Adelaide. So that is all on the scoreboard. Two minutes gone. One thing we didn't say, Paddy, is happy Easter to everyone. Good Friday. Enjoy the four days off. Although we're working hard. It's not really work <laughs> not, down here not in the commentary box at the Bay. McBean will fly for this, and the spoil came from Xavier Walsh. He's got the uh, big job on Liam McBean in his first game in the port jumper. And we'll have a throw in. We're about 70 around from goal. Sweet worked his way to the front. McCree got the crumbs. Little handball looking for Bailey. Murphy Short's right with him. And the ball's on the deck, and we'll have another bounce. Darcy Bailey's been such a good player for Glenelg. Love watching him play. Really clean and gets in and under as well. Yeah, his run out of defence is superb. 
Sweet taps back over the head. Short goes over his head. In fact, this is Short kicking it inside, forward 50. Goes into the forward pocket and taking the intercept mark. I reckon that's Kitschke. Goes and finds Bailey in the pocket, the opposite pocket at that northern end. Well, the Kernahan end. Should pay him his dues. He goes short. Scott McGree spilled the mark he definitely should have taken, was wrapped up, could be holding the ball. Um, Pye says, yes, it is holding the ball. Good tackle, Georgiades. We might have done a shoulder here. Yeah, he's not looking great. Georgiades wanted to run around, told no from umpire Bowen. Just no. He's staying out there, McCree. Has he done his shoulder here? I think, yeah, I think his shoulder's popped out. So he'll have to come off. Georgiades, meantime, pops it into the pocket, just over the head, and out of bounds. Boundary umpire says off hands. So to be thrown in. Yeah, he's walking towards the interchange bench, isn't he, Bonds? Well, that's thrown a bit of the spanner in the works for Glenelg. The number one ruckman will come from the ground. Riley Holder's gone into the ruck against Byzantini. Just out from Port's goal. Matt Allen got the clearing kick outside 50. On a, it's rolling towards the boundary line. This one there, Tom Cleary, in a battle with Cole Gerloff. Gerloff takes it over and we will have a throw in. Geez, that's a big loss for Glenelg cool. early, Paddy. He's always been a solid contributor since coming in. Cam? Came to the club last year. South Adelaide player? Yeah, played a little bit at South. We'll have a throw in. 55 around on the outer side. Glenelg Oval. Sweet easily got the tap down to Cleary. Went around the body. Scully in front. Couldn't take the mark. Sharon... Berg was there. Scully picked it up. Snap towards goal. It's oh. bouncing towards goal. Has it gone through? It's a goal to Port Adelaide. So Scully gets the first. Just a little snap and it bobbled and Kitsky tried to get a mid on it and just couldn't touch it. They get the first goal, Paddy. It's clever work from Port Adelaide to finish off the goal, but it's been all Port Adelaide to start the game. Five inside 50s. Two clearances apiece at this point, but they're there at the moment, Port Adelaide, and they're, and they're dominating that that pressure around the footy and keeping it locked inside their forward 50, and that's where they're the beneficiaries in the end. A couple of new players for Glenelg in defence, as you mentioned. Kitsky, Oscar Adams. So that, uh, Adams has got the job on Scully. No Will Gould, though. Saw him walk up to the coach's box just next to us before. Back in the middle now. So tap one down. Probably Port Adelaide's favour, but then firing it out was Holder, as Bonds mentioned. Makeshift stand-in. Well, not quite makeshift or stand-in Ruckman for the rest of the day. Well, he was the backup for back McCree, up. but uh, now he's the full-time. Full-time for this afternoon at the very least. Umpire said there was a holding the ball in the middle of the ground, so more. Just goes short and finds Turner. Wanted to give and go in Aiden Turner. Eventually it got told to give and go and did just in the nick of time. And then a long ball up towards the... Oh! Ball, almost a good mark, but not quite. Holder fired a handball back. Glenelg will try to clear. They haven't had an inside 50 yet, I don't think, Bonds. Port Adelaide now with another chance. Trying to burn off. It was Evans. Got a handball. Gave it away. There's a high free kick. So Glenelg with the chance just to steady the ship through last year's best and fairest lines. Sure looking for Holder. Dangerous kick. Georgiatis came in late. They're going to give Riley Holder the free kick. He's got up limping. They don't need to lose him as well. <laughs> Gerloff. Excellent kick to Reed Culler. Takes the mark. Gives the handball off. Glenelga running. Chris Curran was looking for McBean. Bounced off his hands. And Port will go back the other way. Scully at centre half forward over his head. He's got Narkle for support, but Glenelg have the numbers. Narkle did well, got a hand in there. Loose footy. Fizzantini outside of the boot is going across and missed. And he's out on the full. Port 1 1. Glenelg yet to score. Who supports community footy? Good old Amy. Of course they do. <laughs> Tell you what, Port Adelaide, they've started this game a much better side than the reigning Premiers. Down the line they go this time. They'll get a chance. Allen with a strong mark. Cuts in board. Whacked out of reach of anyone by Kyle Marshall. And then up towards half forward. 
just paddling and paddling. No clean possession taken by anyone. It's a bit of a mess inside there at the moment. More with a chance. Snap around the body. Has he snuck that home? You bet he has. Nick Moore with a great goal for Port Adelaide. Their second. They go to 2-1-13. Glenelg yet to score. Well, what a great start as the new skipper, Nick Moore. One of his first touches off the boot. It never, we were sort of right behind that and it never looked like it was doing anything, anything else except sailing through for a goal. Making an impact already is Nick Moore. Just early stat leaders, uh, Chris Curran with four, Riley Holder with three, Cam McCree with three, but now he's off the ground. If you're just joining us, Oscar Adams down back and Matthew Allen a couple of uh, possessions as well. And they'll go out more over the ball, but as I keep pointing out, inside 50 is eight to zip, Port Adelaide's favour. Riley Holder up against Vicentini. Oh, Dante got up early. Holder stayed down, took the footy, tried to get it to Lyons. Vicentini intercepted. Sin, the spin move. Cool. Smashed it into the forward line. Georgiatis tried the half volley. That didn't work out. And a nice mark centre wing by Corey Lyons. Kick came from Kitsky. Here's Hosey, his first touch of the day. Talk about Logan Evans having a big job. And the Ken Farmer medalist. Kicks it out on the full. Well, Lockie, not your greatest start in 2024. <laughs> Plenty of time left to rectify that as the season goes on, I'm sure, for Lockie Hosey. Of course, as we mentioned, he's surrounded by quality inside his forward line. They just need to get it in there. That ball sneaks out the back and Port Adelaide can be off and running if they use it well up towards the middle of the ground. Scully marked it on the chest and turned for home. Kick inside forward 50. Might pan out all right. Not quite in the end. Glenelg, they can cover it, although they've turned it over now and now another chance for Port Adelaide snapping towards goal. It goes across the face. Bailey Chamberlain it was. He ran from the back pocket, Bailey Chamberlain, all the way, followed the ball all the way down the ground, ended up having a, a shot for goal. John T. Scharenberg. Chip kick to Proud. Now Gerloff. Just keep possession. Glenelg like to do this early in a footy game. Although that wasn't a greatest chip kick. And from Scharenberg, ended up in the hands of Byzantini and marked by Lorenz inside the boundary line by about 10 centimetres. Outside 50, very crowded forward line. Goes short into the pocket on the half volley. Georgiatis can't take the mark. Sucking in the big ones, Mitch Georgiatis. What a... just... Uh, Taking a bit of wind out of himself there. We'll have a throw in in the forward pocket. Interesting to note those players picking up the ball, as you pointed out, four bonds for Glenelg. Mostly defenders at this point. That's where the ball's been. That ball is at the bottom of the pack. And now fired out towards the wing. Nick Bean sat under it, took a good mark, wants to run on quickly. Again, umpire Bowen says, you've got to come back around the mark, Liam. Surprisingly, Glenelg fans not happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> he just goes short on this occasion. Sharon Burke. McBean's another option. Hasn't moved very far from where he was, so takes the mark. This time loads up inside Ford 50. Hosey the target. Squashed between three magpies. And then a handball out the back. Hosey again now. One more opportunity. Goal. <laughs> Matty Allen kicks the goal. And the Bays, they finally get on the board in Premiership defence. 12 minutes gone. Archie Lovelock was the one who got the handball out into open space. And Matt Allen, as he does all day, just kept running into a dangerous spot. Looped the handball over the top to Allen. And he finished. Gets his first of the season. Glenelg's first of the season. One goal. Plays 2-2. Two -two. One of the rare inside 50s. Results in a yeah. goal for the Tigers. The problem is, if you're Port Adelaide, you do have to starve them of inside 50 because when they do get in there, they're so point, po potent, I yes. should say. That's the word you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> Vicentini and Holder. 
to get us back underway. Great crowd in here at Strata Rama Stadium down the boat. Hope you're enjoying the coverage on sample now. And we have an ordinary bounce from the up. Why don't we just throw it up, he says. That's exactly what he does. Matty Snook left without the footy. Will Lorenz is in there for Port. At the back of the contest, Bell sprints away. Bombs it inside, 50. Oh. Reynolds in front, got his hands to it. Down Lovelock. Snaps around the corner. Lee McBean in a great spot here. Takes the chest mark. Only about 20 metres out. Again, Lovelock important. I was going to say, Lovelock read that like a book. That play fell off the hands. Reynolds again presenting inside Ford 50. And the good thing that Archie did there was he looked up, noticed where McBean was. He didn't just blaze away towards the goal face, but saw where he was and, and placed the ball right on his head. And McBean, of course, he's always going to take a mark like that. Don't want to put the mockers on Liam, but uh, he will kick this. <laughs> One of the easier shots for Liam. Only 20 metres out. Slight angle. We'll just go back and put it through. Oh. Goal umpire doesn't move. Glenelg, two goals. Port Adelaide, 2-2. Two, two. So the reigning premiers have answered with a couple of quick ones. We've gone 14 minutes in the first term. And who supports community footy? Amy does. And whether you're watching on Sample Now or... On the AFL app, afl.com.au. Welcome to Good Friday. Welcome and happy Easter to everyone. Paul Monzer and Paddy Goldfield. Goldfield? Gold mine. Goldsmith. Sorry, Paddy. That's all right, mate. Paddy, it. Paddy Goldfield. Could be. If you it's want actually to be. not bad. <laughs> <laughs> we can run with that for the rest of the day. Darren's on cameras too if we didn't tell anyone that. It's been a fantastic start to this contest and we'll keep you up to date of all the scores as quarter time goes on. But here's James Bell out the back of the pack again inside Ford 50. He was looking for Hosey, spilled the mark, trying to do his best up against him is Evans. He's won himself a free kick. Cuts towards the middle of the ground. That's a great kick, great vision to Sweet. He took his time in turning around. He's got Curry out wide if he wants to go in that direction. Chooses not to. So at advantageous kick is the direction he goes into. Miller Carter. He goes inside forward 50. Not a perfectly placed kick. So the Bays may be able to run away with it. They just toss it around between one another for a second and that kick's come well off the side of the boot. So now Moore, the skipper already on the goal sheet this afternoon. Goes short. Port Adelaide Bonds, they just inch towards forward 50. Yeah, they've been good so far. And on the lead, Georgiatis takes the mark. That's Will Lorenz you got the footy from. It's been, uh, it's been a good start to this one. It's fantastic. It's just a two-point game. And Georgiatis will take his time. He has a massive run-up. It's Georgiatis, which is OK. <laughs> well, he not, does too. Not, uh, not sort of Ben Brown territory or anything like that, but it's decent. <laughs> it's a very patient shot for goal is Mitch Georgiatis. Crosses 50 with the right shoe. Looks on target. Is on target. Georgiatis gets his first and Port's third. They go to three goals too. Glenel, two goals. Well, it's now really opening up into a game, a quality game of football. Glenelg moving the ball with fluency in towards their Ford 50, but Port Adelaide as well. A little bit stop-start the way they're playing their football, but still, when they get it up inside Ford 50, they're making the most of their chances. Well, if we see this all day, Paddy yes. will be pretty happy with uh, goals at each end. 17 minutes gone in the first term. Chris Curran was the man who turned that ball over for Glenelg. It's very unusual to see him miss a target. His sixth possession of the afternoon so far for Chris Curran. Leads all comers alongside his teammates Riley Holder and Jonty Scharenberg. Max Proud, rather not Max Proud, Liam McBean into the middle. But extracting it out was Reed Culler. Towards half forward, Lovelock chases after it and in the end he got a good piece of it but couldn't make the most of it. Port Adelaide try to keep it in, umpire says throw it in. Great contest early. 
Some nice open plate, some good skills on display early in the season as well. State game here next week, yeah, Paddy. Yeah, that's right. Always exciting when the state game comes to town, especially the this time... Rotten Vicks. <laughs> well, your word's not mine, but um, against Victoria, yeah, yeah, as a part of Gather Round, which is exciting. It is great. Oh, well, look, look, the town is already a buzz with Gather Round. Yes, yep. But to have uh, the sample playing the VFL down here at the bay, awesome. Back in the, oh, I was going to say, Ruck McBean, and then up towards half forward. Hosey took it really well, then gave it off the stretch. His high ball is going to amount to nothing in the end, and Port Adelaide can clear, starting with Byrne at the last line of defence. Josh Byrne in the back pocket. The little mo. Flat kick. Reed Culler did well, and he's brought down in a tackle by Aldridge, and the umpire will come in and ball it up. But, uh, we don't have a 57, Paddy, so we're assuming that's Dylan Aldridge. It might be one of the Ferrari brothers, actually, looking at him. Ball comes out to McBean. He's going to line up, kick towards goal, just off target. Minor scored. Two, go two goals, one at Glenelg, three goals, two Port Adelaide. Ticking closer and closer to time on here in the first quarter. That ball was, goes long. Narkel leads in the chase, beaten to it by his teammate. Anastasopoulos, he gets tackled. Crowd wants holding the ball. Port Adelaide, they still work it forward. Now Narkel gets on the end of it. Deep in the pocket, just goes short. Another chance, perhaps coming up for Port Adelaide. Georgiades deep in the pocket. And uh, solved the, the problem. Oh, here we go. Bo Baldwin is number 57. Bo Baldwin. We don't know much about Bo. But we know that he's wearing number 57. Black and white. Georgiardi's around the corner. He's dragged that right across the face. Another minor score for Port Adelaide. They're third. They go to 3-3. Glenelg 2-1. 20 and a quarter minutes gone in the first quarter. Bailey takes the mark. Wanted a 25 metre. As Will Lorenz on the mark was... A little bit exuberant. Brad McCarthy. Short. Finds Reed Culler. Culler looks to switch it to the wings. A two-on-one intercepting was Georgiatis in front of Allen. Breaking a tackle, Walsh. Now Allen stole it, picked his pocket. Kick towards Hugh Stagg and Josh Sin. Sin did well, kept his feet. Got the handball out to Walsh. He's going to be run down by Stagg. Great effort. And the turnover. McCarthy. Back to Gerloff. And Gerloff's kicked it out on the full. Great chase down from Stagg in one contest. And he was there at the uh, next contest to affect the kick. They've just been a little bit wasteful, Glenelg. And rather uncharacteristically inaccurate across the ground at the moment. But Port Adelaide, they struggle as well. Up towards half four, that ball stopped, not going any further. And Bo Baldwin at the bottom of the pack. Good old number 57. Thrown up. McBean probably won that one down. He's been recruited in to help out the ruck stops now this afternoon with McGree off injured. That ball squirts out the back and now Murphy short inside Ford 50. Off hands, they were Vicentini's. Ball umpire says holding the ball. So a free kick again for Port Adelaide inside forward 50. Yeah, Gerl Gerloff was yeah, spun in the tackle Gerloff. and threw a boot at it, but the boot didn't connect with the footy. So it's a good decision by the umpire that's holding the ball. And you can see Nick Moore on your screen having a little bit of a push and shove with well, Darcy Bailey. That's really unusual because Nick Moore hates that. <laughs> you of sarcasm in my voice. Yeah, there. I picked up on it. Don't worry. Um, meanwhile, Charleston with a chance at goal. Big wraps on this kid too, Lockie Charleston. 19 years old, first game in the black and white after being picked up, pick number 52 in last year's draft. What an introduction to competitive footy in SA. Good Friday at Glenelg. He's put that well across the face 
in the end it's going to be marked and kept inside the field of play by Riley Holder. That's Riley Holder in the back pocket. 22, almost 23 minutes gone in this first term. Paul Bonds of Paddy Gold. Smith with you. <laughs> Don't mix it up all day. Good gold mine, gold field. Chris Curran. Looking for Reynolds. Front position, Miller Carter. Kick into the middle of the ground. Lorenz. Short kick. Astonopoulos has taken the mark inside 50. Confidently walks back. There is a fair bit in, a fair bit of feeling in this game. Tom Scully was throwing his weight around there. Anastolopoulos will have a set shot who kicked from probably just on the pay to 50. Only a slight angle as you can see. And if he keeps getting a lot of the footy, we should get his name right by the end of the game. <laughs> Anastolopoulos kicks from 49. And trying to grain that extra distance. Just sprayed it a little. Misses to the right-hand side. Port Adelaide, three goals, four. Glenelg, two goals, one. Just had an update yes, from my auntie, of all people, about Bo right. Baldwin from right. Port Lincoln. There you go. Via Ross Trevor College. A little bit of extra info. You never... You will take it from wherever it comes. Cleary now inside Ford 50 up towards full forward. Mark in the goal square. Goal. Port Adelaide just like that. Jordan Sweet in the goal square. Strong hands. Just had to turn around and kick the goal. Yeah, it was poor defending, really. How you leave Jordan Sweet on yes. the goal line yeah. and not thump it through. And the big ruckman just had to turn around and snap the goal. So that two and a half goal lead now for Port Adelaide. Start of the game by, by a couple of goals. And that's where they find themselves as we approach quarter time. 25 minutes gone. 2-1 plays 4-4. Round one. Hot day in Adelaide. 30 degrees. And a great cat crowd in. Most with sunscreen on, which is good to see. Hold Plenty it. of kids too. And that's what, oh, it's what Sample's all about. Correct. Isn't it? Families. Here's the super match, and Riley Holder gets the clearance. Hosey in front, Re brilliantly read by Bailey. Snap towards goal, just kicking off the ground. That's dangerous from Burn. Cole Gerloff got a kick back inside 50. Walsh wrapped up by McBean. Umpire said, I'll have it, blokes. Could have gone anywhere, that kick from Burn off the ground. Very dangerous. Vizantini got the tap down. Lorenz will run onto the footy. Oh. Supporter Miller Carter was he out before he kicked it. And in fact, it's Dylan Williams. And it did go out on the full. It will be a free kick to Cole Gerloff, isn't it? Or they're just fighting over it at the moment. Umpire said, no, it is Cole Gerloff who will take the free kick. He could kick it from here. Cole Gerloff right up. Well, in fact, outside the boundary line. I was going to say up against it. He is out of the ground. Crosses the shade, which is creeping across the bay. That is a fantastic kick, but not fantastic fantastic enough. The whole crowd, including Cole Gerloff, thought that was a goal. All the, the fans behind him were roaring at home. And into the upright. 2-2 Two -two plays 4-4. Four -four. Almost 27 minutes gone in the first quarter. Quinton Narka will mark the kick in. Still inside his defensive 50. 27 minutes gone. Short to Walsh. Walsh, flat kick down the line over the head of Cody Zeus. Riley Holder behind him, cleans up. Bombs it back towards 50. Hosey's coming. Walsh did well, knocked it down. Reed Culler stay down. Allen, the handball forwards at Lovelock. Lock, love lock. He'll run into an open goal and dribble through. Gets some reward for his efforts earlier in the quarter. Archie Lovelock gets Glenelg's third goal. They go to three goals, two. Port Adelaide, 4-4. Four, four. Now, Archie Lovelock again finding himself in the right place at the right time, but, of course, is working hard for it as well. Four possessions for him so far we this had, afternoon. He, he, had, he was involved in the first two goals, yep. and then he gets he's some reward. He's been outstanding so far. 
providing the presence inside Ford 50 that I suppose Coach Reva would expect of him. Reva, what a great man. Darren Reeves, coach of Glenelg, former Woodville cricketer. Ah. Good keeper, Reva. Pretty good coach, too. Luke Reynolds, of course, also a handy cricketer, as I understand it. Back in the middle. Narkle just hacks it out of midair, didn't go very far. And as a result, umpires yeah. picked out a free kick. So up towards half forward, McBean on a strong lead. He was gifted a handy kick from uh, Corey Lyons. McBean just too far out to score, goes in towards the pocket. How's the body work from Matty Allen? Yeah, it was really good. Well picked up, Paddy. Just used the body well. And um, Miller Carter wasn't very happy. Thought he was held on to before the ball got there. And he probably was, but well played by Matt Allen. So, seasoned campaigner. Allen, second in the best in Ferris last year. Slightly better angle than we saw moments ago from his teammate. That said... He got further away from the big sticks. Another minor score for Glenelg. So 3-3-21 plays 4-4-28. Been a good quarter of footy to get us underway in 2024. The last game of round one. Bringing up to date with scores around the grounds at quarter time. Vizantini dropped the mark. Cody Zust could try to get it to his skipper. Moore now tries to burst out of the tackle of Matt Allen and then throws a stray elbow to Nick Moore. Umpire's just going to throw it up with players fighting each other on the ground. Well, umpire, Pizzantini's trapped a kick, <laughs> tapped it straight to McCarthy. McCarthy dribbled it towards the boundary line. Sin is They're happy still to see going it over. It. Nick Moore not backing down. Matty Snoop. Snoop. And Miller Carter having a few words as well. In comes oh, Big Tommy, Anastolopoulos. Greek blood coming out. <laughs> Thrown in. And there'll be a free kick here. Um, uh, called to play on. And McBean marks only about 15 metres out. He runs, <laughs> runs into Tom Cleary and then falls over on purpose. Umpire wasn't falling <laughs> to that one. <laughs> and he'll go back and have a set shot from basically where he kicked his first. Correct, yeah. Liam McBean. Well, that was a hectic minute of football. And it is on again in the middle of the 50. Nick Moore is getting shoved right away from the action by Lockie Hosey. And he's probably well to take his advice. <laughs> well, we'll stay on this with McBean. 31 minutes gone. Siren sounds. Liam McBean makes it a one-point game. Kicks his second. And at quarter time, Glenelga 4-3, Port Adelaide 4-4. Four, four. How good was this first quarter, Pat? Fantastic. I mean, early on it looked like Port Adelaide, they looked like the better side, but the Bays reeled it back in really, really well. And that's what you've got when you've got your class mo mo movers rather in the middle of the ground and your potent forwards inside forward 50. Any chance you get, you just know... Nine times out of ten, you're going to give it a good chance at taking it. Quarter time, Port lead it by a point. Back for the second quarter, straight after this.
Here we are at the Host Plus Sandfall League. Oh, you can feel the intensity. Watching closely from the sidelines as the ball shanked from the flank. Heading out on the ball. Sees his chance. Space around him. Come at the moment. Come at the man. But no! Stolen by a mate. What a moment. <laughs> Who saw that coming? He certainly didn't. Sandfall. Nothing beats it. Jerome picked up a bargain blender and juiced more than he expected. And Julio bought cheap car insurance with cheap accident repair. When it comes to the important stuff, don't risk bargain regret. Go here instead. Next time join the A-Team, hey Julio? Worried about cheap insurance? Who offers great value cover you won't regret? Amy does. 40 crispy, juicy Chicken McNuggets are delicious with friends. But together with tangy Cajun sauce, that's for close friends only. What does it take to win Super Ratings Fund of the Year? Strong performance, competitive fees, and a focus on members. A super fund that delivers all three? That's a plus. Big moment for the debutante at her first Host Plus Sandfall League game. First time out on the ground for a half-time kick and catch with the old man. Already demolished her first footy pie. Cleans up. And now, Dadlock's in a beauty! And on this day of bursts, can she, will she make it stick? Yes, she can! What a moment for the youngster! Sandfall, nothing beats it. Welcome back to Strata Rama Stadium. Quarter time here. We got a good game of footy. Port lead at 4 4 28 to Glenelg 4 3 27, a one point lead to the Magpies. Paul Bonza, Paddy Goldsmith with you. Paddy, what do you got for us as far as stats go? Well, leading the ground, or leading all comers on the ground, I should say. Riley Holder with nine. Of course, we saw him go into the ruck after Cam McGree went down early in the contest. Jonty Shanberg has eight. Chris Curran with seven. Matthew Allen with six for the Bay as well for Port Adelaide. Josh Byrne with six. Murphy Short also six deep in and under. And Mitch Giordiardi, Giordiardi's Nick Moore, Josh Sin and Xavier Walsh with five each. Been impressed with uh, some of the young Port players um, up and about. Uh, Will, Will Lorenzo like the look of. Um, Josh Sin playing down back. Had kicking duties a couple of times. But you can't help but be impressed with the number of people here today, Paddy. Oh. On Good Friday, happy Easter to everyone. Great crowd in. Definitely be up around that 4,000 mark. I'd be very surprised. I suggest there's been good crowds across all games this weekend at, at the Sanford. There was about 4,000 last night at yep. the parade, which was fantastic. Of course, Nord got the chocolates over the Double Blues. Uh, earlier today, the Roosters... They got over the top of Central District 9, 12, 66 to 14, 9, 93. They got over the top? They yeah, they got over the top. But they, they went down <laughs> to the Sorry. Bulldogs. The Bulldogs got over the top of <laughs> the Roosters. I'm going to rush through this now. The Crows, they beat South Adelaide at Finners Uni by five points. And the Eagles, big winners over West Adelaide. You might as well take the start here, Bonds, if you want. I've made a full of this quarter time break. No, it's all good. It's early. It's pre-season for us too. First game, round one. It's a big win for the Eagles. Yes. Just not sure what we're going to get from West Adelaide this year, or well, all the Eagles. So, Adam Deloyer, 32 possessions for the young man. Yeah, he's a good footballer. And um, Sam Jacobs gets his coaching yes. career off yeah. with a win down at uh, Montaigne Care Oval. Siren Towns to get us underway in the second quarter. Sweet up against Riley Holder. Riley Holder only just won that tap on the way down. Coming to meet it was Culler. Corey Lyons lays on the turf. And the umpire says, give it to me. He does. Happened just then. 
thrown up now. Sweet takes it out of the ruck. He was dispossessed. I think that was holding the ball. Umpire agrees. So now hold up. Loads up on his right boot. Ooh, goes towards the flank. It was a good kick in the end. Well disguised. It might favour Port Adelaide though. That handball errant over the top. And now McBean, was he taken high? He was, says the umpire. So oh, This is a veteran move by Liam McBean. He dropped the <laughs> knees and just threw the head into Will Lorenz. Beautifully played by Liam McBean. New captain this year. He's mentioned game 113 this afternoon for Liam. And, of course, three Ken Farmer medals. Already has a couple of goals. So he's up to 271 in his Sandful career. And he will kick around the body. It's a little short oh. and marked on the line. I think that's Walsh back there. And he'll kick it back into play. Goes out of side. Long ball. Pack forms. Narkle just read it best. And now Turner burns and turns on the pace, I should say, up to Vicentini. He was second to the ball, but in the end picked it up first and then kicked towards full forward one-on-one. -on -one. Well read at full forward by Scully. And a high tackle, says the umpire. Scully, the one dishing out the high tackle. So Glenelg off what is fullback. Holder to take a mark. He had to sit and wait. It was brave. And now he'll turn and go. Pretty good footy from Riley Holder early in this one. Kicks to Reynolds, marks, 65 from home. On the left, puts it to the goal square. Hosey's there through the fingertips, off the ground by Bell through for a minor score. Yeah, Riley Holder, probably, if not the best man on the ground at the moment, yeah. he'd be really close. Playing some great footy. If you're just joining us, Cam McCree, the Glenelg Ruckman, has gone off with a shoulder injury. We're unlikely to see him again. Looks like he dislocated his shoulder. Johnny Scharenberg, the intercept mark from the kick in. Quickly back inside 50. Reynolds on the chest, 45 out straight in front. That's quick thinking from Johnny Scharenberg, just to keep that ball moving. And the thing about the Glenelg forward line, there are many things I'm discovering this afternoon <laughs> about the Glenelg forward line, but one is that they are always moving inside there and there are players on the lead at every time when the ball is approaching. Set shot for goal. It's his specialty, this man, Luke Reynolds, from 49 metres. Absolute shocking kick. Maybe the worst kick in his career. Xavier Walsh got on the half volley, put himself under pressure. Goes back to Logan Evans and goes out of bounds. So Port made a little bit of a meal of that. They're not going to get a free kick yeah, here. Did he kick it, it out on the full? A handball out oh, of the full. Well, hands. not on the full, but yes, last, last possession. So, Hosey. Hosey's going to go the Abunana around the corner. He loves it. So does the goal umpire. Did we ever doubt Lockie Hosey? First goal of the second quarter goes to Glenelg and Lockie Hosey. They are five goals, four. And Port Adelaide are four, four. And Glenelg hit the lead for the first time today. Well, they've started this second quarter the better team. Certainly had more of the ball and the early chances inside forward 50. But again, both sides being wasteful with ball in hand. And in the end, it was wastefulness from Port Adelaide on the last line of defence that really cost them a goal. It was... It in, the, in Walsh's defence, it was a horrible kick. It was wobbling around all over the place. But, yeah, he could have done a little bit better there. He'll learn. Just 18 years of age, Xavier Walsh. Sweet. Sweet. You go. <laughs> Won the tap down in the middle. It was uh, taken by Turner, but he was wrapped up immediately by Allen. Sweet again. Jeez, he's dominant in there at the moment. Lions hacked it out of the air. Out towards the far side wing, taken one-handed by Sin. Have to check his numbers, see how well he's tracking so far. First there, Charlson. Didn't, couldn't pick it up. So, there's an impressive tackle out there on the outer side. Just dishing him over his head was Cole Gerloff. Nick Moore it was, getting tackled. Six possessions for Josh Sin. Six possessions. Not a bad start to the contest. As that ball bobbles around again, out of side. And we'll have another ball up. 
Five minutes gone. 34 plays, 28. Good game of football to finish Good Friday in the Sandville. Sweet again. Got the tap down. Cleary, hurried kick. Inside 50. Georgiatis overran the Sharon. Sharon Berg will take it out of bounds. It's good to say Sharon. I was going to say, it's one of the other new fantastic <laughs> things about this year is the Sharon. The players are certainly happy getting the feedback from them. Not that the other footy was terrible. Everyone loves a Sharon. That's true. Ball in inside, ports forward 50. Riley Holder got the tap. Gerloff trying to keep his feet wrapped up, wrapped up by Cleary. And we'll have another stoppage. Just inside Port Adelaide's forward 50. Thrown up. Around the shoulder free kick. Umpire says play on. Snook wanted to run away with it. Cleary down and dirty and won a free kick for it. Cole Gerloff got him high. Gives off a handball short and out deep in towards the pocket. No mark taken. It spills. Max Proud there to mop up. Allen, then Bailey, then short one more to stretch. Excellent pick up from Proud. The oh. one hand. Brilliant. Glenelg fans must be so thankful he curtailed his retirement. He went in the Reynolds direction. Well, the Bays went in the Reynolds direction. And in the end, Bell watches it over the boundary line. Centre wing, grandstand side. Glenelg lead at 34 to 28. Who supports community footy? Amy does. And the thousands of people who are here. Yeah. Bonds and Paddy with you. Sweet. Ran over the footy. Riley Holder. Brought to ground by Nick Moore. And we'll have another ball up. As that man, Bo Baldwin, checks out for a rest. Sweet, another tap. He's dominating the hitouts. Reed Color broke the tackle. Lovelock kicked smothered. Beautifully worked by Murphy Short. Martini in the middle of the ground in a fight with Narkel. Comes back to Lovelock. Lovelock will find Matt Allen out wide. Keeps his width so well and so important to this Glenelg structure. Matty Snook beyond his distance. Just lobs it up. Reynolds, front of the pack. Big spoil came from Sweet. And Port have the numbers and will run it out of defence through Walsh. Great grab on the outer side. Georgie Artis, sticky fingers. It was good defensive work by Port Adelaide. They, they thought about it. Now I'm methodic with it. And you're right. Great mark. It's Georgie Artis. And he's taking his time to think about it while... Every player floods back in that direction. He went to a two-on-one. The one-one out. Scully it was. Good mark up above his head. He's got a man running into space, or two men running into space. Vicentini gets there. Handball's back. Narkle it is now. Tackled. Back to Vicentini, trying to work his way through, and then back into traffic. Georgiades. Now Turner loads up on his right boot towards full forward. Good defensive mark, Scharenberg. Yeah, out outnumbered there. Was Will Lorenz. Bailey in the back pocket will go short. Snoop. Still like him better with the fuzzy hair. <laughs> but you get to a time in your career where you think it's about time I got a crew cut. This is off hands of Kyle Marshall. Out of bounds. We'll have a throw in on the outer side in front of the fans in the bean bags. Is it about time I had a crew cut? <laughs> oh, it's well overdue. <laughs> <laughs> well overdue, Patrick. Does your mother call you Patrick or Paddy? Oh, somewhere in the middle. Depends what you're doing. Yeah. Sweet. In the ruck against uh, Oscar Allen. And the ball comes back to oh. Sharonberg. Gave it away. Aiden Turner puts it up to, for Astonolopoulos. Nearly grabbed the mark. Nearly pronounced his name right. And Tom Scully is on the ground. This could be holding the ball, and he's well done, Darcy Bailey. Bays fans sound like they haven't had a free kick all day. That was their tenth. Port Adelaide, they've had six. In the middle of the ground now, the Bays up towards centre half forward. Great mark on the chest. Lockie Hosey rolls around towards full forward. Yeah. Reynolds goes back, laid back even on that mark. Outstanding football end to end, Glenelg. Well, that kick gave Josh Byrne no hope. 
It was an outstanding kick from Lockie Hosey. Reynolds just ran back into the space. And he will line up for his first goal of the day, Luke Reynolds. Pretty simple kick for a man like Luke Reynolds. He's got it. Bounced off a pole in the background, but he certainly got it. So Glenelg, they begin to kick away ever so slightly. 6-4-40, plays 4-4-28. Almost 11 minutes gone in what is the second quarter. Kick the first two goals of this quarter. We saw a bit of a... Port got out the blocks early and Glenelg pegged them back and mm. then a bit of a seesaw, which uh, saw Port lead by one point at quarter time. And they've kicked the first two of this quarter to lead by 12 points. And into the ruck for Glenelg, Oscar Adams. It's his first game, the 20-year-old. Up against Vizantini. Warm day in Adelaide, 30 degrees. Vizantini up high, clearly won the tap. Bell won the footy to Gerloff. To Curran, forward handball looking for Allen, ends up with Lovelock, good skills, and caught Billy Stretch out the corner of his eye and went sideways towards him. Stretch will look for the big timber inside 50, McBean's there, Hosey flew as well. And Port will get the hurried kick out, it's a spiralling kick towards the boundary line, and spoiled out by Will Lorenz. Rather fortuitous in the end for Port Adelaide. That ball could have gone all the way out of bounds. Last possession, but as I say, Will Lorenz with a nice spoil. Sending it almost into the people sitting in front or in the Glenelg Cricket Club, District Cricket Club. Narkel, little handball out the back. Short tries to get his way through. He was wrapped up. Got a handball out, though, and now running towards Ford 50. Inside, up towards full forward. Umpire picks out a free kick, so an easy one coming up for Kitschke. Just felled in the play by Miss Georgiati. He goes out wide this time. Had McCarthy deep in the pocket. Underneath the scoreboard, 6-4, plays 4-4. Goes further out wide, stretch, now cuts in board. Here's Lovelock. You can see the people sitting and enjoying the sun on the outer side. It will soon go down. Fantastic twilight football for round one. Ball spills out again. Port Adelaide just try to work it through his Cleary. No darting ball. Might work out all right. Turner quickly turned on his heel inside 50. Trying to get there first on that occasion. Georgiades in the end. Out of bounds. It goes. Last touch rule. Max Proud. It's a bit unusual in the number 12. we seeing him in the number 5 for a couple of seasons. McCarthy switches on. He'll come grandstand side. And we'll switch it back the other way. Not much in front of him. Flat low kick looking for stretch. Lorenz was there as well. Hosey taken over the line. Pushed in the back. Free kick. Just a little bit exuberant there, Logan Evans. Hosey, flat kick, back inside. Chamberlain, kick smothered by Hosey. Oh. Good second effort, high tackle on Matty Sneak. <laughs> Logan Evans just puts his hand up. What, what did I do? He always took his head off, mate. Cole Gerloff to the outer side. Matt Allen takes the mark. He goes back. He's got players in board if he wants to, elects not to. Full 40 does go, McBean. What a set of hands he's got. Was never going to drop that mark deep in the pocket. In the northeastern corner of Strata Armour Stadium. Really enjoying this game of footy. It's up one end, down the other. Skills have been high. McBean runs around. Nailed it. That's his third. And Glenelg, they're starting to look the goods. In fact, they've looked the goods for a large portion of this game. And it's, well, they're putting it together. Port Adelaide struggling to now where they were in the first quarter. 7-4, 46. 
plays 4-4-28. So a three-goal lead at the moment for the home side. And it's starting from Riley Holder in the middle. He's been excellent. Probably just dropped yep. a little. Jordan Sweet's probably got on top of him a little bit in the start of this quarter, but his footy around the ground in the end of that well, the second half of the first quarter has been excellent. And now Glenelg opened that three-goal lead. 7-4 plays 4-4 who supports community footy. Amy does. Paul Bonza, Paddy Goldsmith with you on sample now. We're on the AFL Apple website. And Riley Holder's got a little bit of blood coming off his elbow. Umpire's happy with it. As long as it's not flowing blood, players can stay out on the ground. Maybe the umpire just need a breather. <laughs> He's going to try and bounce it, and he does. Oh. Good work, Hump. Sweet. Got the tap down. Nick Moore on the left shoe. Vezentini got fingers to it. Couldn't hang on to it. McCarthy burst the tackle. Martini handball to himself. Good way of getting an extra stat. Will Lorenz back to his skipper. Moore off a step. Wobbles it inside 50. Back with the flight. Scully was good. Georgiatis picks it up, snaps it, goal, bang! Made that look very easy, did Georgiatis. He kicks his second, and Port get an answer. They go to five goals, four. Glenelg, seven, four. Well, over halfway through the quarter, you'd have to say now, Port Adelaide, they hadn't made an impact on the scoreboard yet this quarter at all, not even with a behind. So a much-needed goal for Mitch Georgiatis and, and his side. And what a clever one, too. It was great, opportunist. Sometimes you can think too much about kicking at goal, Mitch. But that time, it's all reflex. Muscle memory puts the fifth one on the board for Port Adelaide. Brought that margin back to two goals. Certainly not insurmountable at this stage in proceedings. Nick Moore, you can see, still causing a little bit of trouble in the middle of the ground. <laughs> I think he will for the rest of the afternoon. Sweet. Won the tap down in what is now a pretty interesting contest there in the middle of the ground. That's Baldwin wrapped up. One of the Baldwin brothers. <laughs> Sweet again. In a tight tussle with Holder. Holder eventually got a handball away. Stretch bundled off it by Moore. He then flicked the handball out to Cleary. All that was taken by Baldwin. Then a kick up towards half forward. Red best by Curran. And then he handled to Lyons. Lyons in the McBean direction, although he's going to get beaten to it by Hosey. McBean grabs it on the second go. Is that holding the ball? Umpire says yes. So Port Adelaide now a chance off half back through Sin. Every day of the week. Great tackle from Josh Sin. Never gave up on the contest. And an easy decision for the umpire. Josh Sin. To Williams. I haven't seen much of Dylan Williams today. And he's got the ball at half back. Winds up, kicks towards Sweet and Scully. Scully almost had enough of it, I thought. Going off the ground, Astonopoulos. Or Astonopoulos. One of those two. Straight on the chest of Mitch Georgiatis. And he has marked the ball. Only 25 out, pretty much straight in front. And he can go back and kick his third, Paddy. And, and again at the right time for Mitch Georgiades to step up and do this. His side needs a goal just to keep in touch as we approach time on. Cometh the moment, cometh the man. He's had a good day out so far. Anastolopoulos. There we go. Again, we, we know we get a hard, he's got a hard last name, but we'll try and get it right as often as we can. Georgiades has put through the goal. So he has three. And Port Adelaide, and now only trail by a goal. They're 6-4, Glenelga 7-4. We've got a great game to end round one of the sample. Maybe, uh, Paddy, I'll get you to go around the grounds and give us the scores from uh, the other games today. Absolutely. And as you do that, uh, I can let you know that Amy supports community footy. Well, earlier it was Central District who beat North Adelaide at Prospect, 14-9-93 to 9-12-66 uh, at Flinders University Stadium. 
The Crows just got the job done against South Adelaide. 13-18 inaccurate. The Crows 96 played 14-7-91. And more team care over in the 2.30 game. It was the Eagles 2013-133 to the Bloods 10-9-69. Here it is a six-point ball game. Moore out of the middle. Couldn't pick it up, so Lyons rips it off him, although umpire said Moore was held. So he's got to have a chance to settle with a kick inside forward 50, although just about every player... Well, not quite, actually. I was, couldn't see some of them. Deep into the pocket he goes. Vicentini just missed it with an airy. And out of bounds and a Glenelg free kick. Bond, do you want to take this? Paddy, Port, Port have done really well here because it was sort of looking like Glenelg could just blow this game yeah, apart. Yeah, totally. And they fought back well here. Port Adelaide. Long kick to a big pack. The players hit the turf. Oh. And Glenelg are away. Hugh Stagg gets a kick inside 50. Hose in a good spot. Takes the grab out of the back door. Just worked Logan Evans under the footy. It was pretty well read by Lucky Hosey. And he's kicked one in this quarter. And there's no doubt he will go back and have a set shot from here. Not much of an angle to speak of. But again, that quick ball movement has uh, got the defenders just finding themselves out of position on both teams. But Hosey, casual approach, casual finish. Gets his second and puts that margin back out to 12 points. Glenelga 8-4, Port Adelaide 6-4. Well, it's clever work by Lockie Hosey, but it's clever work by all the Glenelg players. He took the mark very similar to how Luke Reynolds did for his last goal out yep. the back, as you called brilliantly, Bonds. And it just means that it's something that Glenelg players must think about going inside forward 50. Let's... Let's push our player inside forward 50 under the ball slightly, pop it out the back over their head, and, and they'll take a strong mark. And, and with players like Reynolds, McBean, and, and Hosey, you've got strong hands all across that forward 50 line. 22 and a half minutes gone in the second term. It's a 12 point lead to the Tigers. Bonds and Paddy G with you. Take it away, Paddy. Back in the middle. Can Port Adelaide bounce back with another one just to keep that touch ever so close? Sweet just spilled it, probably at the right wrong time. Holder now up towards half forward. Williams off half back, just assessed his options and then chose the wrong one. Gerloff could go out wide if he wanted to, chose not to, and eventually put out the don't argue. Now Kitschke fell over, got up just in time, and now a high ball up towards the half forward flank. Good mark. Great mark in the end defensively by Josh Byrne. Right in front of the new playground out there on the outer side. You going over there later? Oh, yeah. Straight after full time. Centre wing. That ball floats. Well read for the Bays. And now out the back, Sharon Berg. High ball to half forward. Reynolds came out. Just couldn't complete the mark. Port Adelaide. This is... Back-to-back -back football at the moment. Well, hold up, half forward. That ball spills out and Port Adelaide can mop up. Xavier Walsh will run it close to the boundary line. Handled it straight to Reed Culler. Now McBean had a fumble on the boundary line. This is horrible footy, but somehow McBean's kicked a miracle goal. Well, it was scrappy stuff. And as soon as McBean... Steady, he went around the corner and kicked his fourth goal. Just like that, McBean's got four goals to his name. It's before half time. And what about that one, too? I think it's probably the best one of the afternoon. It was, as you said, scrappy football. It wasn't great, but they got the desired result. It was amazing there from uh, Liam McBean. It was just some horrible footy. <laughs> There's no player who wanted it. They sort of all, all wanted it to go yeah. out of bounds, but in the end, Lee McBean said, no, nah, bugger it, I'll just snap a goal from 40 metres out on the boundary. Nine goals, four, plays six goals, four. So when Port got it back to a one-goal game, it's back out to that three-goal margin yeah. as we approach half-time. Byzantini and Riley Holder go at it. Byzantini got up high. Tap went nowhere. Holder got the footy out to Lyons. Lyons over the top. Lovelock in a bit of space. 
Kicks towards the top of the square. Reynolds going back with the flight almost. Posey was there as well. Bell snaps. Minus score. 9-5. Plays 6-4 here at Strata Armour Stadium. Champion data do their stats as usual. How's these for the numbers? Hit outs. Port Adelaide 28, Glenelg 3. Sounds about right. Clearances, Glenelg 18, Port Adelaide 12. They are reading Jordan Sweet's tap work pretty well. The Bay's on ballers. Port Adelaide, that lava goal or two just to finish this quarter. Williams comes all the way out from full full or from full back rather. Long kick to in the end a good mark taken for the Bays. Max Proud. As you pointed out earlier, Bonds now brandishing the number 12. Cuts in short, finds the love lock. Met solidly by Mitch Georgiades on the rebound. So a love lock. Goes inside forward 50. Oh, almost a great grab. Was it paid? No, wasn't taken. Potentially a free kick. Hockey Hosey wanted high. Nothing doing. Umpire will come in to throw it up. Two premiership captains out there for the Bays today. And neither of them are the captain today. No. Chris Curran, Max Proud. Good stat, Paddy. Free kick. Might be going the way of Glenelg. It's for a high tackle. It is going the way of Lockie Hosey. Isn't on the mark, so I'm not sure if he was a culprit. Couldn't quite see that with a pack of players. And Lockie Hosey, who has kicked a couple this quarter already. On about a 44-degree angle. Again, the casual approach. Again, he likes the finish, and so does the goal umpire. That's his third. And Glenelg have broken this game open as we approach halftime. Built that lead. That's a four and a bit goals. They lead 10-5 to 6-4. All right, they have broken this game open, Bonds. They started the second quarter the better side, let Port Adelaide back into the contest a little bit, but then have just piled on the goals since. And McBean with two goals this quarter, Hosey with three this quarter, and Reynolds with one. Still a long way to go, but it's uh, Glenelg just looking the better side mm. as we approach halftime. Port Adelaide with just two to their name in the quarter, and it's Georgiades providing the only relief. For them inside forward 50. We'll go again. No, as we mentioned, Port Adelaide dominating in the ruck, but Holder basically a, a fourth on baller in there at the moment. Love Lock couldn't claim the mark, so just tapped it down and let everyone else fight over it. Right on the corner of the centre square. Empire Bowen again throws it up. Vizantini won it down, but it was spat out the back and then kicked forward. Lovelock just punched it high in the air and then it was spilled by a Port Adelaide player. McBean fired a handball out. Bell in all sorts of space. And then fired it into all sorts of space. Out of bounds on the full. Maybe too much space for James Bell. Dylan Williams. Just come grandstand side. Narkle. And Shadows. To the leader, Cleary. He's got Baldwin. Short. And well done by Bell. A little too casual from Baldwin. And we'll have a throw in. 65 metres around from Glenelg's goal. They've kicked six goals this quarter to Port Adelaide's two. So open this game up a little. Byzantini front spot. Tapped it down. Glenelg have their hands on the Sharon again. Bailey off a step. Wobbles it inside forward 50. Hosey, good use of the body. Almost took the mark. Ball come to deck. High shot again and another free kick. And it will go the way. Looks like uh, Oscar Adams. Mm. He will have a set shot. Only about 20 metres out. 
Could kick his first goal in league footy, Sandful footy. As he snuck it in. He likes it. Goal umpire likes it. Glenelg, 11-5. Port Adelaide, 6-4. And the man, Oscar Adams, gets his first goal in sample footy. That's the sight you love to see in round one. Absolutely. You like to see it at any point, but in round one, you know, start of a new season, all your teammates get around you to celebrate your first goal in league football. 20-year-old, 199 centimetres. And they've got a lot to be celebrating at the moment. Long quarter, 31 minutes gone. Yep. There's been nine goals kicked in the quarter. Seven by Glenelg. Dominance. For the home side here in this quarter as we... Wait for the ball to be retrieved. Oh, I get surely, one from that end. Surely we have more than one footy, don't we? <laughs> what were you saying about the nice new Sharons? Oh, fantastic. Someone just pocketed one down the other end. So can Port Adelaide muster something to hold on to before half time? Won't be too much longer left, I would have thought, although we've had a little bit of a break now. Nice strong bounce from the umpire. Vicentini tries to take it. And there is your siren. Just as Port Adelaide looks to go forward. The Bays fans are happy with that effort. At quarter time, it is 11-5-71 to 6-4-40. A 31-point lead, Bonds. We'll uh, have a short break and come back and discuss what's going on in the first half. And uh, we'll see you on the other side of this. Here we are at the Host Plus Sandfall League, where you can feel the intensity. Watching closely from the sidelines as the ball shanked from the flank. Heading out on the fall, sees his chance, space around him. Come at the moment, come at the man. But no! Stolen by a mate. What a moment. <laughs> Who saw that coming? He certainly didn't. Sandfall, nothing beats it. Jerome picked up a bargain blender and juiced more than he expected. And Julio bought cheap car insurance with cheap accident repair. When it comes to the important stuff, don't risk bargain regret. Go here instead. Next time join the A-Team, hey Julio? Worried about cheap insurance? Who offers great value cover you won't regret? Amy does. 40 crispy, juicy Chicken McNuggets are delicious with friends. But together with tangy Cajun sauce, that's for close friends only. What does 
does it take to win Super Ratings Fund of the Year? Strong performance, competitive fees, and a focus on members. A super fund that delivers all three? That's a plus. Big moment for the debutante at her first Host Plus Sandville League game. First time out on the ground for a half-time kick and catch with the old man. Already demolished her first footy pie. Cleans up. And now, Dadlock's in a beauty! And on this day of first, can she, will she make it stick? Yes, she can! What a moment for the youngster! Sandful, nothing beats it. Welcome back to Stradorama Stadium. Half time here, and Glenelg have a 31 point lead 11 5 71 over Port Adelaide 6 4 40. Paul Bonds of Paddy Goldsmith with you. Paddy, uh, let's have a look at some stats at half time, please. Yeah, well, Glenelg, they're dominating possession at the moment. Their lead kicks 115 to 87. Handball's 15 to, or rather, 59 to 44. Um, hit outs that one I mentioned in, during the second quarter. They trail 3-33, to 33, so Port Adelaide dominating in the ruck contest. But the clearance-wise, Glenelg, they're reading it better, 22-13. to 13, And then those inside 50 numbers, Port Adelaide actually still lead 28-23. to 23. And if we just quickly have a look at some of the individual stat getters for the Bays, leading possession getter, Riley Holder. Basically, and he's operating as the ruckman at the moment, but basically a fourth on bowler. Chris Curran with 12, first game back at the club this year. Jonty Schoenberg with 12, while for Port Adelaide, Miss Georgiades, three goals with 10 possessions. Nick Moore and Dylan Williams with 10 as well. With the goal kickers for the game, Lee McBean has four, Hosey three, and singles to Allen. Oscar Adams kicking his first goal in the sample, and Archie Lovelock one. And for Port Adelaide, as uh, Paddy said, Mitch Georgiades has kicked three and singles to Scully, Nick Moore and Jordan Sweet. So half-time here, 31-point lead, 31 point lead to the Tigers. We'll be back for the second half on Sample Now, straight after this.
Happy Easter and welcome back to Strata Rama Stadium. Half time here. Glenelg have the lead over Port Adelaide 11 5 71 6 4 40. Paul Bonza and Paddy Goldsmith with you. Paddy, uh, it was a good, a good first half of footy, and Glenelg probably just showed their class and at the uh, towards the half time there. Well, they are reigning premiers for a reason, and, and you're right. They've got class littered across every line of their side. And just as the quarter wear, wore on, and we might see more of it as the game wears on, they uh, they flex their muscles and their big, tall, powerful forwards really stood up. Their midfielders, um, I think, probably more than anything, stood up as well. Every time it goes forward, you know, in the likes of McBean, Hosey and Reynolds floating around there, I've loved the game of Archie Lovelock as yep. a small forward. Uh, he's handed out a couple of goals and he's got one himself, so he's been important for them as well. And uh, the game of Riley Holder in the middle, he's gone into the ruck at about the 10-minute mark of the first quarter. Yeah. Cam McCree did a shoulder. So Riley Holder has been in the ruck ever since then. And it's, uh, he's doing an excellent job to get us underway in the second half. Here's Paddy. Went for a quick walk around at halftime. It is packed. Yes. Great crowd. Down by the boundary line here at Stradorama Stadium. And they are being treated, especially the Glenelg fans right now, to a fantastic game of football. That one falls to the deck. Sweet might get there and pick it up if he can. He couldn't bend down quick enough. Lays a tackle and applies the pressure. Holder now tracks back towards it. Giving away a free kick. Just copped or gave away a high one to Anastasopoulos. Port Adelaide now. They move the ball up towards half forward. Here's Georgiades. Inside Ford, 50, one-on-one -on -one deep. In fact, it was a two-on-one with Sharonberg coming in and almost taking the mark. Could have been a holding the ball at the bottom there. Now here's a chance, a flying chance for Port Adelaide. Celebrates like it's a goal. It is a goal. And it's a good one. Pencil that one down to Will Lorenz. Yeah, I think you're right there, Paddy. Will Lorenz out the back of the pack, off a step, across the body, and gets his first goal in the sample and first goal for Port Adelaide in the second half much needed one too yeah Will Lorenz are you happy about that getting his first senior goal in the sample just a minute played in the third term and it's a good start for Port Adelaide if they want to I think they've got to bridge this gap and be around the mark at three quarter time yeah totally I want to get Glenelg to uh kick away that has been the scoring end there's 11 goals Make that 12 goals now to the Kernahan end. Or left, of, left of your screen, Jordan Sweet dominating the centre bounces. Got the tap down again, but Glenelg will get the clearance. Matt Allen wobbled it towards 50. Good mark coming out, Xavier Walsh. There's uh, big wraps on this kid. Goes short, Josh Sin. Good lead up. Thought about the handball to Marshall. Instead, went to Dylan Williams. Marks the left shoot. It's close to the boundary line, and John T. Scharenberg takes it out in front of Lockie Charlson. It was a Port Adelaide one-point lead at quarter time. Turned around very quickly into a 31-point lead for the Bays at halftime. Visitors have added a goal already in this last quarter. That kick up towards half forward. Everyone well, didn't do their best to grab it. Then Bell did. Kicked it up. Just went over the top of Hosey. He got onto his feet better than anyone now. Lovelock in the goal square. Gets it back for the Bays. That's his second for the evening. And again, Glenelg, just they know how to will the ball forward. It was a fantastic kick in the end. Worked out well, but Hosey kept his feet, I think, was the main thing, and then fired a handball back into the right place. Well, at half forward, about four players ran past the footy, with the exception of James Bell. He was the one who tried to hit Hosey on the lead, and as you said, Hosey just kept his feet and shot the handball out to Lovelock, who was running into an open goal. Good Friday footy on sample now. 
and the AFL website or app. Great to have you with us. Riley Holder up against Jordan Sweet. It's a mountain of a man, Jordan Sweet. Matty Snoop wrapped up in a tackle. Umpire will ball it up. Aiden Turner's tried half for Port Adelaide yeah. as well today. Sweet again wins the tap down. Short might have been taken high. And will win the free kick. Aiden Turner with six possessions so far. Yeah, a little bit more than that. Yeah. Murphy Short with nine. From the CMS Crows over on York Peninsula. Fires him inside forward 50, standing tall. It's Riley Holder, I think. Holder. It goes in the Reynolds direction. How's that for a mark? One handed. Initially brought down with two. Up towards centre half forward, off hands, just running past it was Turner. And then getting wrapped up was Walsh. Empire let it go and have another stoppage. Bayes fans very appreciative of a strong tackle though. Sweet tried to dish Holder out of the way. Nothing doing. We'll have another stoppage. These two have had an interesting battle. Sweet whacks that forward. Lions, little handball out through the hands of Snook. He was probably taken without it. He was, so he's going to win a free kick for it. Matty Snook in the middle of Strata Armour cool. Stadium. Onto the lead. Hosey onto the chest. Beautiful footy. Might get a 25 here. Umpire will come in and say fair enough. Lucky Hosey might have put a little bit of mail on it. It's a tough gig for Logan Evans all day, isn't it? You may, I know you said the same thing earlier. Great, but great learning experience correct. for the kid. Correct. You know, 18 years old and playing on one of the premier forwards in the Sandfall. Had a bit of experience in the AFL with the, the North Melbourne Footy Club. But this is his true home, down at the bay. We'll kick from 49 metres. And that is a lovely executed goal from Lockie Hosey. That's his fourth. He's up and about the hose. Kick three in the last one in this quarter. And Glenelg doing everything right after uh, Port Adelaide kicked the first goal of the quarter. They're yeah. with two quick ones. 13-5 plays 7-4. They look a much stronger side now. First quarter was just sort of a blip getting the season going in as they look to defend their premiership crown. Just a little bit slow, although one point off the pace at the turn of the quarter, so not even that far off the pace. But uh, this, what we've seen across the last two quarters is the Glenelg we've come to expect. They have been stunning. And we'll look to go on with it now. There's no doubt about that as the sun starts to set. Sweet won the tap down. Got it back and now heaves it inside Ford 50. A premature jump for the ball from Georgiades means it's going to be a free kick coming back to Max Proud. He just goes short. Finds girl off. Thought it one way and then chose the other. It was probably a good decision in the end because the ball sat up perfectly. And now the bay is just Slowly think about it. Colour. Out of side. Thirteen five plays seven four. Long ball down the line. And it's gonna be a mark paid in the end for Port Adelaide. Do you think Reed Colour is a better footballer since we stopped calling him cooler? Oh, you'd like to think so. I hope that's the sort of... Oh, intercepted by Hugh Stagg. Well, Logan Evans just had a couple of minutes he didn't want to just forget. But again, it's a big learning experience for some of these young kids. And Hugh Stagg will go back and have a shot. He'll kick from about 45 straight in front. 
I just about read read colour, but he was he was sort of a fringe player for a long yeah. time, and he's now one of the regulars of this lineup. Hugh Stag taking his time. Made pretty good contact. And another goal to the Tigers. That's the first one for Stag. And Glenel. And they have now broken this game open. They're 14 goals, 5, 89. And Port Adelaide, 7, 4, 46. And Paddy, uh, three goals to one already in this quarter. We've just got nine minutes. Mm. Yeah, you struggle to think of a way Port Adelaide can find themselves back in this contest. They're getting dominated in possession. Can I ask you a question? Please. Who supports community footy? Well, that's an easy one. It's Amy. <laughs> they do. You. Thank you, mate. And, of course, I think we'll be impressed when we see the crowd figure of all the other people who support community footy and came in here this afternoon. So watch this. These two old rivals battle it out. Allen cuts through the middle and then fired a handball that was probably a little bit too difficult for Manny Snook to deal with, but he's won a free kick for it. Just as Quinton Narkle thought he'd been given a gift. So Snook inside forward 50, low ball, good ball. Mark taken by Stagg again. And it's not very far away from where he just had his last shot at goal. It's almost a carbon copy. No one on the mark at the moment. Now the poor players will work it out. I'm not sure if that free kick was there for mine. It seemed a little bit soft, although the umpire's right next to him and we're 100 metres away. It's always important to add that caveat. Yeah. Stag for two and a couple of minutes. Kick from 45. Oh, umpire was bowled over in the end. Going to need some assistance in uh, <laughs> making sure what happened actually happened. It was a minor score. Cleary to bring it back in. Goes and finds um, Sin short. Just Sin. I don't know why people laugh when the umpires fall over, but it is funny. Cleary <laughs> has a bounce. He's fine, by the way, the goal umpire. On the left shoe, down the line, Georgiatis. One grab, two grabs. In front of Kitschke. It's up with a bit of a limp. Short, Josh Sin. Crowded forward line. And they'll go filled the gaps. Kicks a flat one towards Scully. Over his head, close to the boundary line. Cody Zuss sees it over. We'll have a throw in about 20 metres around from Port's goal. Karen, Tom, go on. Tom Scully, been quiet today. Four possessions, one goal. Yep, again, big learning curve for this kid. A couple of marks, yeah. Short throw in. Picked up by Billy Stretch. He goes around the corner. Sin the intercept. So, take two. For Sin, we'll see where he goes this time. Again, I could say the same thing. Crowded four line. Glenelg have plugged the holes well. In towards the pocket. Scully came to it second best. Snapped towards goal. Fired out. Right across the outer side. Watching it go over. Curran. He'll bring it back into play in the end. Last possession rule. Reynolds was his target. Went over his head. A couple of players ran past it. Now Turner. His kick inside forward 50. Not a good one. Bailey. In towards the middle of the ground. They could be out here, the Bays. Colour. One more handball. Lovelock streaming towards forward 50. Goes long and deep. Free kick paid. No mark paid. So another shot at goal coming up for the Bays and for Allen. I think you were right, Paddy. I think it was a free kick down the ground as well as the mark. Ah, okay. So it didn't matter. Yeah, Love got, Lovelock got filled after he got rid of the footy. So it was going to be a free kick to Glenelg regardless. And Matty Allen took the mark anyway. It didn't matter. Matty Allen. 64 goals to his name. One already this evening. To make it a 50-point ball game. He's got it. 
Bays fans, they love it. And those in the Bays coaching box next to us love it also. The Bays, 15-6. 96 plays 7 4 46. A couple of goals for Matty Allen. And they really are just right on top now here, the Bays and the scoreboards. Someone's kicked the plug out. They've dominated that, this game. That electronic scoreboard's gone. <laughs> and give you some uh, leading stats. Riley Holder, 19 disposals He's, uh, and five clearances. Matty Snook up to 15 disposals. Chris Curran, 14. And the first Port player in the mix is Mitch Georgiatis with 12 possessions mm. and three goals. Beholder, sorry, it will be Sweet and uh, the debutante, Oscar Adams. Glenelg get another clearance through Bailey. Xavier Walsh in a nice spot takes the mark against Reynolds at half back. Walsh looking. Upfield for Asimopoulos. Oh. Now Bailey got the handball to the Lions. Hit McBean on the lead. Oh, he had a bit of a fumble. Liam kicked into the pocket. Hosey. They're everywhere, the Glenelg forwards at the moment. They're running all over this Port Adelaide defence. That took no time at all for Liam McBean to gather that ball after he dropped it. He turned around, knew where his teammate would be. That's the chemistry these, these forwards have for Glenelg as the scoreboard comes back online. Oh, good. 15 minutes gone in the quarter. Lucky Hosey lining up for number five. Not this time, Lucky. This is to the right hand side. 15 7 Glenelg, 7 4 Port Adelaide. Four goals apiece at quarter time. Port Adelaide, they've kicked just three since. And they found the going tough as Sin gets a move on. Run all the way to half back and then kick the ball long out of side. Almost a juggling mark for the Bays. You can work it out, Adams. Kick in the colour direction, just off hands. Turner it was around front position, saw it out of bounds. Aiden Turner, 21. 15 games to his name. 16. With this evening's contest. Thrown in. Sweet just takes it out immediately and then hacks it on the boot. Not going to go very far, at least for his side. He'll come back through the middle of the ground proud. Long darting ball in the Reynolds direction. Off hands, it tracks towards the boundary line. Cleary it was, just tunneled it out. Tried to keep it in. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt. The umpire won't, as Reynolds will get the free kick. The last possession, Rock. Archie Logblock comes off for a well-deserved rest. Billy Stretch replacing him. Reynolds kicks for Hosey, who wanted to fly. Got in the back and gave away a free kick. Should go in the way of Baldwin. No. It's going to Miller Carter. Goes short. Finds Lorenz. In fact, it's not Lorenz. It's Turner. To burn. Across to Evans. Evans is going to miss the target. It's going to roll out of bounds. And he'll want that one back, Logan Evans. A short kick. Finds McCarthy. McCarthy sprinting down the wing. Puts it inside forward 50. Hits Lucky Hosey on the chest. And he gets cleaned up after he's marked it. Accidental. On purpose. No, it's just accidental. Lucky Hosey will go back and have another set shot. Can he kick his fifth with this one, Paddy? I'll give him the benefit of that. He's had a day out so far, Bonds. He's been very, very impressive. But we've said that from this possession, position many times before. So McBean has three. Hosey has four. And this is fading. McBean flew. Jordan Sweet was there to help. Josh Sin left the footy behind, then went back and got it. He wrapped up an attack, a win trouble. Miller Carter dropped the footy. Now Nick Moore. Got a hurry kick away. There's so much pressure in the port defence. And the umpire will come in and ball it up. 
They are under pressure, Port Adelaide, not just from uh, the 18 men opposing them on the ground, but from the crowd here as well. They want a free kick right now. Sweet got his kick away just in the nick of time. Scharenberg spilled the mark. Stretch picked it up and will turn and go. Little darting ball inside Ford 52. Tigers spilled the mark together. Allen got a handball from Culler. Kick towards full forward. McBean, well, dangling with one or two Magpies players, Magpies opponents. Narkel now gives a handball back and they're off and running Port Adelaide. Out towards the outer side wing. Georgiades just has to sit and wait for it. He was tackled immediately by Martini, who shook him over the boundary line. I'll resist the urge to say <laughs> anything else after that. But well played. <laughs> sweet and Holder go at it again. And that tap to Sweet, Allen. Little handball up to Holder and half a kick away. And it will be some holding after disposal. Hugh Stagg will get the free kick. Stabs it towards Reynolds. Good spoil from Miller Carter. Got the handball and now kicked it out into space. Oh, Vizantini, oh, sorry, Scully just left it behind. Anastolopoulos has a bounce inside 50. Closes and kicks the goal. Great finish. A bit of a consolation for Port Adelaide, but a great goal. Kicks his first in the sandful. There's been a few of them today. But Tommy Anastolopoulos adds to Port Adelaide's score. They go to eight goals for Glenelg, 15-7. It was a really clever handball from Murphy Short over the top of his head. He knew that his teammate Tommy was going to have space to run into on that side of the contest. And he was running with pace already, so put it out in front of him, and it was a great finish from long range with no one at home in the goal square. Well, it was good pace too. He just, we know that he's quick, but he, he did the right thing. He ran into open space, straightened the body, and finished. Yeah. So Lorenz with a goal already in this quarter as well for Port Adelaide. It matches the two goals they scored in the second quarter. Sweet took it out. And a team out at the back of the pack who went inside Ford 50. Just handball it around. Here's their most recent goal kicker, Anastolopoulos. Kick up towards full forward. Off hands, goes through for a minor score. A tight tussle there in the goal square. Max Proud again. That's where you'll find him. As Darcy Bailey goes to bring it back in. Another minor score for Port Adelaide. 8-4-52. They trail... The home side, 15-7, 97, 21 and a half minutes gone in the third quarter. Martini in the back pocket. McCarthy. Thought about the switch, still thinking about it. In the end, we'll drill it down the line. Reynolds will fly, oh. take the grab. Outstanding. He's got great hands, Luke Reynolds. Towards Hosey. Good spoil came from Evans. Sin front and centre. Scully might have caught one high. Umpire let it go. Good tackle by Riley Holder. The turnover. Sharonberg to Hosey on the chest. Nice grab. Wants to go straight away. He's got Matt Allen on 50. Allen on the left shoe from 45 metres. Oh. Matty Allen! Classic finish. Allen has three. And Glenelg have 16. They're 16-7 to uh, Port Adelaide. Eight goals, five. Great work from Matt Allen. You don't get many better finishes than that in this competition. Outstanding from Matt Allen. You can see him on your screen there, sucking in the big ones. Pressure came from Nick Moore, and he just laid back on the kick brilliantly. He's one of the best finishers on the run yeah. in the sample, Matt Allen. Just that left boot. An opposition side's let him get on the run so often. Encroaching on forward 50. He's played a lot in the middle yep. today. We normally see him on the wing. Winky. But he's played a fair bit of time at centre bounce. Yeah, you can see him there now. Standing alongside Baldwin. And McBean into the ruck. Sweet probably got the final say on it in the end. 
They're not going anywhere anyway. Wrapped up at the bottom of that, Charleston. Thrown up again. McBean, sweet, sweet won it. McBean took it. Put it on the boot. Inside Ford 50, Reynolds the target, came at it hard and then tapped it up. Stretch, handball back to Bell. He's got space in which he can work. Settles, goals! Outstanding James Bell. His first for the evening. And Glenelg, they keep kicking away, Bonds. 24 minutes gone. 17-7 plays, 8-5. Well, just like that, Glenelg kicked six goals for the quarter. Yep. Like, it seems a, a closer contest than yeah, this. It does. But in the end, Glenelg have just... Every time they go inside 50, they're almost kicking a goal. They've been excellent since quarter time. They were a point down at quarter time. And they now lead by 56 points. They've got 35 inside 50s. Ford is 24 scoring shots. Yeah. Whereas it's 36 inside 50s for Port Adelaide's 13. Coach Darren Reeves down on the boundary. Be a very happy man. McBean up, won the tap down. Baldwin wrapped up by Snoop. And we'll have another stoppage. Sweet. Just tap straight to Baldwin. He was wrapped up, and we're going to do a lot of all again. I mentioned earlier, it was a fantastic day here in Adelaide, and the evening is set up for football brilliantly. Fantastic atmosphere all night. And especially if the home side win, it'll be a great atmosphere with footy fans going home in a very good mood, you'd have to say. That ball not going anywhere. I think more than the few will stay around for a while. Yeah, agreed. There are many enjoying the facilities on offer here this evening. Sweet just took it out the ruck, whacked it on his boot. Bailey tries to trap it, does in the end, did fantastically well. Just almost... Broke the ankles of his cat or his former captain, Chris Curran. I think Chris Curran just tripped on that shadow. <laughs> Had an absolutely clumsy moment. The ball went the other way he thought it was going. And ended up just sitting on his butt. Throw in right in front of the western side here. In the shadows. Grandstand side. Umpire seen a free kick. Baldwin, the less famous brother, will take a kick on the wing. Cody Zust. And Fluoro Green Wheels. Puts it up for Scully. He's in the middle of this pack. Got a hand to it. Couldn't take the mark. Bell front and centre. He's tackled. And we'll get a ball up about 40 metres out from Port's goal. They'd love to steal one here. Here's Charleston. He lines up. He goes. Well, that was too easy. <laughs> Just like everyone else was standing still, he grabbed the footy, ran around the outside of the pack, and kicked his first goal. That might be his first goal for Port Adelaide. It is. Of course it is. So another first goal of Paddy. It's been that kind of day. Has been a, 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 across the whole competition, I'm sure, as well. Yes. Today, a round of firsts. Phil Hurden's favourite day. Yes. First goal kickers in the sample. Yeah, he loves that's right. Him. Shout out to uh, Phil Hurden on the Great. commentary team yeah. and, and the stats guru of the sample. Any number, he's got it. Somewhere. Oh. Might need to it. dig around for a while, but he'll have it. Back to a 50-point game, Paddy. Oh, you never know. They've been winning the ruck taps all evening. That's where you got to start, but the Glenelg midfield is just too classy in there. Can read it confidently. There's another one. Snook grabbed it first, gave it to Allen. Swung around on his boot. Inside Ford 50. Put on a late defence repel momentarily. Trying to whack it forward was Adams. Not getting very far, so his stretch in some space. Kicks towards full forward off hands in the end, I think it was. Just tapped through for a minor score, so one extra behind to the Bays total. 
28 and a half minutes gone. Josh Sin bring it back into play. Went short to Cleary. Good use of the footy. Cleary, horrible use of the footy. Did well, Baldwin. Now Marshall dodged around oh. a couple and dodged around a third just. Kicks the half forward, thrown out of the contest. Was Turner, wins the free kick. Aiden Turner. Anastolopoulos takes the mark inside 50. And he's going to go back and have a set shot. He's got Cody Zust in the pocket if he wants him. He's not even looking at him. Anastolopoulos has won in this quarter already. Cody Goldsmith. Oh, in the end, he does go to Narkel. And the man on the mark, Chris Curran, spoils it into the boundary in front of the cricket club. Outstanding. Chrissy Curran still got a lot to give. It's a very good player at this level. Yeah. A few years at the PAC Old Collegians. Sweet smacks it down, taken by Snook. And then up towards the centre wing, coming out and taking a good mark. Marshall, he's been quiet this afternoon. But he's got an opportunity to use it now. Just pokes it in in the narkle direction. And he's going to roll around, run around exuberantly towards full forward. High ball, two on one, two wins out. Bays, happy to see it out towards the boundary line. Kitschke it was, whacking it that direction. I think we've seen just a bit too much of this from Port Adelaide, just bombing it yeah. long. They yeah. haven't hit any leads up inside 50. Um, they've just been... Playing into Glenelg's hands, really, as you called it, two on one there. In the end, it was probably a three on one. Mm. All thrown in. Scully, front position. Might have got a bit of a nudge. Nick Moore got his hands on it to Cody Zust. He snapped the goal. Just like that. Zust gets his first. And Glenelg lead it 17 8 to Port Adelaide. 10 goals, 5. And we're going 31 minutes in this term already. Well, it's four goals now in this quarter for Port Adelaide. Five for the home side. So they haven't quite broken even. And they certainly haven't reclaimed any lost ground at half time. That's obvious. Well, the game got blown open in that second quarter. Yeah. Where they Glenelg turned a one-point deficit into a 31-point lead at half time. The shadows start to creep across Stradorama Stadium. Mustn't be too long left before that final break. Moore, you know, busy first quarter. I think been quiet since. Puts them inside forward 50 now. Taken first time by Sharonberg. The Bays, and they can work it out the back. Kitschke did well. Sharonberg again on the side of his boot. Kick was smothered. Perhaps another opportunity coming up for Port Adelaide. Snap towards goal. And marked on the last line by that man, Curran. He eventually gets out of the goal umpire's way. <laughs> Went to Allen. And had to hurriedly kick around the body. Whacked down for the Bays. And now Lovelock in some time and space. Gerloff gets it back after he did the whacking just before. And stoppage siren. Three-quarter time. The home team in control, 17-8-110, Port Adelaide 5-10-65. We'll be back for the final quarter action straight after this. Stay with us. This is Sample Now.
Here we are at the Host Plus Sandfall League. Oh, you can feel the intensity. Watching closely from the sidelines as the ball shanked from the flank. Heading out on the fall. Sees his chance. Space around him. Come at the moment. Come at the man. But no! Stolen by a mate. What a moment. <laughs> Who saw that coming? He certainly didn't. Sandfall. Nothing beats it. Jerome picked up a bargain blender and juiced more than he expected. And Julio bought cheap car insurance with cheap accident repair. When it comes to the important stuff, don't risk bargain regret. Go here instead. Next time join the A-Team, hey Julio? Worried about cheap insurance? Who offers great value cover you won't regret? Amy does. 40 crispy, juicy Chicken McNuggets are delicious with friends. But together with tangy Cajun sauce, that's for close friends only. What does it take to win Super Ratings Fund of the Year? Strong performance, competitive fees, and a focus on members. A Super Fund that delivers all three? That's a plus. Big moment for the debutante at her first Host Plus Sandful League game. First time out on the ground for a half-time kick and catch with the old man. Already demolished her first footy pie. Cleans up. And now, Dadlock's in a beauty! And on this day of birth, can she, will she make it stick? Yes, she can! What a moment for the youngster! Sandful, nothing beats it. Welcome back to Strata Rama Stadium, a three-quarter time as the love songs play out over the speakers <laughs> here. Uh, it is Glenelg 17-8, 110, Port 10-5, Hope you're having a great, good Friday. Paul Bonzer, Paddy Goldsmith with you. Paddy, let's uh, get some scores from the other games in the sample. Well, uh, last night it was the Red Legs, 11-11-77 over the Double Blues, 7-8-50. Starting this season much better than they did last Earlier today at Prospects, it was Central District who made a good final run last year. 14-9-93 over North Adelaide, 9-12-66. At Flinders University Stadium, it was South Adelaide going down to the Crows, 14-7-91 to 13-18-96. And at Mortem Care Oval, the Eagles had a big win, 20-13-133 to 10-9-69 in the AFL. Just quickly as well, this weekend, Bonds, it was a 20-point win for Collingwood over Brisbane. 92 played 72 last night and earlier today. Carlton won by 56 points over North Melbourne, 137 to 81. Thank you, Paddy. As uh, Port hang on to a 45... Oh, sorry, Glendelg have a 45-point lead going into the final term as the shadows creep across Strata Rama Stadium. Fantastic crowd in. Still some of them are having a kick and a catch are just making their way off the ground. Um, it's been a great day. Good Friday footy and the sample is back. Had a big day. Triple headers all over the shop. Yep. And a double header here today. In fact, no, we had a triple header. We had the women, two women's games and this league game as well. So to get us underway in the final term, Paddy, I think you should uh, send us home. Let's get it done. It is fantastic at this time of year when the women's league overlaps with the men's league and there is just a footy bonanza yes. in the sandful. Each way you look, your club's playing somewhere across probably multiple days in the weekend, including the under-18s and under-16s. And, of course, you can see every second of it on sandful now. 
passionate crew bringing you season 2024. And it has all started this week. Holder against Sweet. Sweet won it down. Look at his teammates muster at the bottom. Turner got to flick the handball out. And that was clever in the end at the bottom by Lorenz. Worked his way through then Sweet. Handballed towards Sin, although sold him into some trouble. And Bailey did well. Got it off to Gerloff, who was tackled immediately by Cleary. So another stoppage in the middle. Sweet again wins another tap for the afternoon. But certainly not an advantageous one for his side. The ball up. Sweet gets the tap down. Kick inside forward 50. Georgiatis coming out to meet it. First run there was Maxi Proud. Close to the boundary line. And we'll have a throw in. 55 around from Port Adelaide's goal. Matty Goldsmith is doing a uh, sample now player of the year votes for us later in the quarter. 3-2-1. So you start, let's start thinking about that, Paddy. Yeah, I'm thinking about it now. Don't worry. Matt Allen from that throw in. It's kicked to the middle of the ground. Reynolds underneath it took the mark. Chopping the arms, whatever you like. Good enough, umpire said. He plays on. Just pops it up for Hosey or McBean. Oh. Here's Stretch. Got out the front of the stoppage. Colour hambles over the top to Hosey, and Hosey has five. Yeah. Under two minutes to score the first goal of the last quarter. And it's the fifth one for Lockie Hosey. Glenelg, 18-8, Port, 10-5. Well, there are holes for Port Adelaide's defence because you cannot be letting Lockie Hosey out the back by himself streaming into an open goal with a simple handball over the top, all that's required to get it to him. I did like the attack on the pack from Logan Evans. He attacked mm, the footy, sure. just didn't get enough of the fist on it. And in the end, uh, the handball came over the top to Hosey to kick his fifth. Impressive day out. Dare say, as I start to think about it a little bit more, he may feature in the 3-2-1. He's got to kick another three, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> you're setting the, I was going to say, you're setting the bar <laughs> that high. Sweet, took it out of the ruck, and then fired a handball out again. Trying to muscle his way off the wing was Lorenz. Now Moore does the same. Kicked him into his teammate, I think. Back of the head, it came off. Now Martini, Scharenberg, stretch. Ran into trouble, so runs all the way back. Out wide he goes. Finds Gerloff. He's got players presenting short, including Curran. Ignored him, went over his head. Bailey the target. Bailey marks it. He goes short and finds Scharenberg. You get the feeling the Tigers are in the mood for quite a fair few more goals as this quarter goes on. Colour out wide to Bailey again. Time and space. Reynolds' direction, couldn't complete the mark. Hosey came in, it was touched before it got to him. Flicked the handball out. And in the end, Moore sitting in the right place as the kick lobbed on his head. Nick Moore. Takes the goal-saving mark. Well, oh, nice defensive mark, I should say. Kicks to Narkel on the outer side. Chris Curran is there to thump it across the boundary line. Good crowd out on that other, other side, as you can see. Lots of fans in today. It's great. The Sample's back. And Good Friday. Congratulations once again to the Sample for putting all these games on Good Friday. I like the idea of that. Rather than spreading them out across the weekend, mm. they can get lost. It's a celebration to footy here in Adelaide. Current. Kicks inside 50. Reynolds flew. Big spoil came from behind. Hosey picked up the scraps. Kicks towards the top of the square. McBean's going to fly. Colour down. Unselfishly tried to get the handball to Stag. Stag has it now. He kicks it over his head and gets another one. Stag has kicked his second. It's a little scrappy. But again, just the constant pressure from Glenelg. Forcing it forward. Forcing it forward. Hosey put it to the top of the square. And Stag finished off with another goal. 
Glenelg, 19 goals, 8, 122. Port, 10, 5, 65. Well, Port Adelaide have got to be careful this margin doesn't blow completely out now. It's already substantial enough. They are dominating Glenelg. Just what their fans wanted to see. Coming in for the new year, they're hoping of, a, of another successful season. Interesting reading throughout the week. Most through the advertiser, most other clubs reckon Glenelg and Sturt will be around the mark again this year. They'll be the teams to beat. Of course, Sturt got beaten last night. Was that Andrew Capel's article in the Tigers? Yes. What would he know? <laughs> G'day AC, I love your work, just kidding. In the middle, Alan fired a handball out to start it all, but it's going to come back to a free kick for Sin. Empire said, you know, it was a throw by Archie Lovelock. Goes out wide, finds Zust. Now this time of day, his boots really do stand out, don't they? They glow, aren't they? They're glowing out on that outer wing. <laughs> they found more. Inside the paint of 50. He's thought about what to do with the ball. He's second guessed and eventually he'll just drop it in towards the hole. Tigers come in to uh, plug up that hole. Kick goes out. They've got men everywhere. Snook through traffic. Couldn't be judged first time as well as he would have liked by Stag. Paddy, and Chris Curran. Sorry yeah, yeah, yeah. Off there. No, no, please Chris, do. Chris Curran was the man who went back in the hole, yep. got cleaned up. And then he come and stopped and was on the bottom of that pack, threw his body on the line again. It's been a nice welcome back for Chris Curran today. He's been outstanding. And he's been very good. He's just, he just doesn't stop. He's, uh, it's great to have him back in the sample. And the umpire will come in and ball it up again. Sweet. The clearing tap towards the boundary line. And it beats Bailey Chamberlain over the line. Had a couple of games with Westies. Seven minutes gone in the final term. The ground just about in complete shadow. Ground announcer uh, Steve Murphy is on the uh, Bundys and Coke. Doing well in defence. Was that man Chris Curran we just spoke about? Fix it out wide. Well out wide, in fact. The ball's gone out of bounds. He's assured me it's just coke. Thank God. A cola. Thrown in. Well, to be thrown in out of side. It's fantastic that everyone has stuck around here this evening too. Friday night, where else would you rather be? And of course, wherever in the world you are watching from, we thank you for doing so. Bailey it was the end of a couple of handballs, a chain of handballs, you could say. And well, it's not going to go anywhere. Marshall off half back through the middle of the ground. Zeus was his target. Won't reach him. But Port Adelaide, they'll go inside forward 50. A handball out the back is a good one. Baldwin inside 50, Zeus. Just to, uh, to, uh, showing some composure there for one of the rare yeah. times today. Didn't blaze away. No, rather than just bomb it long, they ran the footy and squared it to Cody Zust, who is a pretty reliable set shot for goal. Former South Adelaide and Nord player. Game number 51 today for Cody. Pretty simple shot at goal, this one. He's hung it out to dry on the far side, though. So another minor score for the visitors. 10-6 plays 19-8. Darcy Bailey gets back underway. Cole girl off. Feigned the handball. Called to play on. And kicked it straight to Quinton Narkle. Well, you want that back, Cole. Usually a very good user. Yes. Quentin Knuckle thinking about bombing one from 55. Instead goes to the lead. Cole Gerloff got in the hole as well as Chris Curran and punched it out of bounds. We'll have a throw in about 10 metres around 
from Port's goal. Well, that punch out of bounds is essentially as good as you get for uh, getting one back yep. in footy. Ten minutes gone in the final term. It's a 56-point lead to Glenelg. Tap down by Bailey to Bell. He can't pick it up. Love lock, good hands. And in the middle of the ground, the mark's been taken by McBean. Assesses his options. It goes short. Oh. Snoop was fouled. And he's picked up a 25-metre penalty for it as well. And it'll bring him within goal-scoring range. Just 44 goals in his 187-game career. Rare goal kicker. It's a good career, though. 188 games. Been a great servant to the football club. And a very gettable goal for him now, albeit, as you mentioned, just 44 goals on the career so far. Crosses inside forward 50. It looks pretty good, and that's because it is pretty good. Matty Snoot gets in on the action. His first, and joins a plethora of his teammates celebrating in style this evening with a goal. In the end, Glenelg will get the easy win. Darren Reeves, their coach, will be very happy. And they celebrate, I guess, their first game after their premiership. They had the trophies out on the ground before the start of play, the flags. Yep. And I'm sure they'll be on display in the club tonight as they celebrate on Good Friday, getting their 2024 season off with a win. Riley Holder still leads all stack getters with 22, six clearances. And he's having a rest at the moment because the debutant Oscar Adams has gone into the ruck against Jordan Sweet. And by taking his time. It's a good bounce. Sweet. And the tap down. Baldwin tackled. Lost the footy. Snook. Quick hands to Bell. Bell snaps inside 50. Reynolds dropped the mark. Beautifully done, Evans. Attack the footy. Got the handball forward, but they're going to turn it over again. Port Adelaide. Running onto it, Matty Allen. Narkel was there, picked up the scraps. Kicks down the wing. Oh, big fly from Georgie Artis. Took out McCarthy and himself. Cody Zust. Got a little handball to Sin. Sin's going to bomb it long. Scully, where is he? He's there somewhere. Can't take the mark. Aiden Turner's down. He's tackled by McCarthy. Got it back to Scully. Scully snaps. And Scully might have gold. He has. The big fella gets a goal, kicks his second, and Port Adelaide go to 11-6, Glenelg 20 goals eight. Well, Port Adelaide goal at this stage of proceedings feels a little bit anticlimactic, especially for the Glenelg supporters. But it was a good goal in the end. They pushed and pushed and pushed that ball forward. And Scully, a goal in the first quarter. Seals the deal for his day with another one in the last. I mentioned his numbers earlier, but six possessions, two goals for him this afternoon, evening. Afternoon. I think you can go afternoon. We're, yeah. still, we're still daylight saving time. True. As he goes for a spell in the ruck. What a way to celebrate a goal. No one won that one. Bell tried to kick away. Scully fired a handball out to Short. Now Short inside 50. Chopped off. Well done by Martini coming across. Had all sorts of time and space in which he could do that. McCarthy, he got it from him. Now Kitschke. He's played his role all day, I think. Martini's run a long way. Got to fit Will Gould back into this lineup in the back line as well. That's true. He's going to be such an asset coming back into this side after a few years at Sydney. Just four AFL games, though. Martini running through the middle of the ground. He can keep going. No Port Adelaide player comes to him, and he's got a teammate coming to him, and that's Lockie Hosey. Mark's just on 50. 
I don't think he'll back himself to go for it unless he can grab some extra real estate. He tries to. doesn't quite work out as he would have liked. Proud. He's there on hand to help out as well. Short he goes. Reynolds deep in the pocket just by the cricket club nets. We've seen this all day, Paddy, is that there's always an option for Glenelg. Yes. There's always a player leading. Yeah. If it's not Hosey, if it's not Reynolds, if yeah. it's not McBean, Archie Lovelock's been involved. There's just been a player yep. all day for someone to hit on a lead. And we haven't seen that at the other end. Reynolds has just won this afternoon. Not as many as his teammates. But why does it matter when he can come up with that sort of class to nail that sort of goal? His second... Glenelg, they continue to kick away. 15 and a half minutes gone. 21-8. Plays the Magpies. 11-6. It's... we played one round. More, almost one round. We've got about another 10 or so minutes to go. And Glenelg, last year's premiers, are going to be sitting on top of the ladder. Straight to the top. Great way to start their premiership defence. And make no mistake, they will be hard to beat. There's one downside for them today, and that's Cam McCree. Their ruckman has done a shoulder, yeah. and he will, I think, at least miss a couple of weeks with, with the shoulder. We don't know how bad it is. I'm sure we'll hear about that during the week as McBean goes into the ruck. Won the tap down to Bell. Bell oh. faked the handball to Curran and then just kept running and wobbled it out to half forward. Reynolds will be the first one there. On the left, puts it up for Riley Holder. Got hands to it. Good spoil from Walsh. Scraps fall to Stag. He goes across the face of goal. Misses to the left, a minor score. Glenelg 21-9. Port 11-6. Just run the numbers. They need two more behinds to go to top after this week because the Eagles had a big 64-point oh, win. of course. So, that's the magic number, 65. No, nah, buggering. <laughs> want the eggs on top. <laughs> no port, bias here. Port through the middle of the ground. In fact, they come to the grandstand side. There's Lorenz. Goes further up and finds Short. The man with the highest number out there at the moment. Murphy Short, 63. Chamberlain. Great kick towards centre-half forward. Mark wasn't claimed by Charleston. They've turned it over. Lions. Got Reynolds a long way from his home. Can go and go. Takes one bounce. Depends on how much run he's got in the legs. There's two. Turns for a kick. Makes it. Bending down to pick that up. Stag. Couple of goals for him today. And then Holder, he could have turned and gone if he wanted as well. Elected not to. Just outside 50. Thinks about his options. Luke Reynolds is 29. And he is running around... Holder, like, sorry, centre half forward, stretch, hands down to pick it up, stretch down to pick it up, you could say, perhaps a high free kick, holding the ball, says the umpire, Hosey not getting what he wanted and a free kick coming up to Lorenz Soribons. I was just going to say, Luke Reynolds is 29, Cole Marshall is 19. Yes. And Cole Marshall is sucking in the big ones and Reynolds is running around like he's only just started since the first quarter. Martini, short, McBean. I suppose it just comes back to being accustomed to playing at the level, doesn't it? Well, I get. I, if you're a Port coach, are you concerned by seeing that? Yeah. Maybe he's just gassed, he's, and it looks like he's coming off now, Kyle Marshall. Don't want to be hard on the kid, but um, I guess uh, Luke Reynolds got a few more pre-seasons under his belt. He might have just grabbed the groin then, Kyle Marshall, so I'll give a him a ginger. reprieve. A reprieve, even. So I'll take all that back. <laughs> you just wasted 60 seconds there, Pat. <laughs> Liam McBean has four from 52 metres. Has five. The class act is Liam McBean. And the skipper for the first time of Glenelg matches the number on his back. Lanell will get the win easily here and they will now sit on top of the table. 22-9, 141, Port Adelaide 11-6-72. I now remember the difficult thing about 
doing a Glenelg game, it is when you're entrusted to do the 3-2-1 at the end of the game, it is difficult because <laughs> there are so many of them that stand out. Contributors right across the ground today for Glenelg. Yeah, that's why I gave you the job. <laughs> 20 minutes gone, final turn. Nick Bean, just a usual day at the office, kicks the goal. Heads into the middle. Contest a ruck contest. Sweet, takes it out. He's done that a lot today. This time he just decides, you know what? My problem, I'll put it inside Ford 50. He made it Chris Curran's problem, though. He didn't seem to struggle with the problem. Took the mark and then gone out wide. Sharonberg, a nice mark under pressure, goes short to Bailey. And then again, Martini. Basically on the point of the centre square. This time straight towards the middle of the square. Colour. He's got a teammate running past him, Proud. Ignores him at least for the first time, because then he goes and finds him again. Proud, just over the top, pops it up. Coming from full forward with Ho was Hosey. He didn't bring down the mark. In the end, another stoppage inside forward 50. Top 14 stack getters on the ground. 12 of them are wearing yellow and black. Yeah. Yep, that's their dominance. Yeah. Nick Moore's tried hard, but uh, Port Adelaide can be completely outclassed today by this Tiger machine. Evans kicked down the line, intercepted by Chris Curran once again. Great comeback game. We've said it a couple of times. But he has played very, very well. Billy Stretch, handball to Martini. He's got Allen inside. Allen will want the left shoot. Kicks it out in front of the lead of Hosey. Oh, Lorenz just made a little error. Hosey oh. cleaned up and hit Lovelock. So Lovelock in mark, marks inside forward 50. He's about 30 metres out. A bit better than a 45 degree angle. A good day out for Lovelock. Two goals. He's been excellent. 19 year old. Yeah. Small forward role. It's a totally. tough role. Him and Hughes Tag both been good at times. This time he's uh, going to miss to the left. 22-10 plays 11-6. The Glenelg fans will be very happy. 22 and a half minutes gone, final turn. Sin comes in, goes short, finds Evans. He's had some moments today. Logan Evans, and some he'd probably like back. Sin follows up his good work, receives the ball again out of side. Kick inside, finds short. Marks in front of the eyes, in the hand. Sin again, third possession in a matter of moments. Up towards Georgiades. Not been bad inside Ford 50 today. Three goals, all in the first half. Gone out of it in the second. Tried to find Narkel. Didn't quite work out as he would have liked. His Zeus. He does find Narkel, who's got space. Goals. And there's a bit of push and shove after the fact as well. It's well on there inside Ford 50. Port Adelaide have kicked the goal. It's been waved down by the goal umpire. Just wonder whether they might get another kick here. Because Narkel was filled well after he got rid of the footy. Oh, I think we'll the, just leave the, it at that. And the ball's been brought back to the middle of the ground. There are no players in position yet. Boys will be boys. And who supports community footy? Amy does. Great supporters of the Sandful. And it will be 12-6 Port Adelaide, 22-10 Glenelg. 24 minutes gone, final term. And uh, the sun is setting here. See the silhouette of the Adelaide Hills in the background. Gather around next week. And Sandful fans, make sure you get down to here and down at Glenelg next week. The Sandful taking on the VFL. Big game. It's been a long time. Since the big B, I'm excited. He's taken on the red, blue and gold jumper. 5,007 people here. Is that right? Was that the right number I got? Yep. 5,007 people. What a fantastic crowd, Patty. 
just what you expected between these two sides as well. And the Bays fans, they always rock up, especially after a Premiership year last year. It's a phenomenal number. I want to thank Steve Murphy for coming up and giving us those numbers. That's awesome. Just the, the support of sample footy, I know we go on about it, but seriously. Anastopoulos has a bounce. Inside 50. Straightens. Goals. As easy as that, he's kicked his second. That, the speed from Tommy there. Yeah. He's got it. <laughs> it's on, it's again. on again. Yeah. Murphy's short up against Darcy Bailey, which Georgiati's in there. You can see it on your screen at home. Miss Georgiades is copping it. And a few late consolation goals for Port Adelaide. It doesn't go astray. Oh, what a great crowd. 5,007 people. We had over 4,000 at Norwood on yep. uh, last night. Good crowds all around today. It's great that the sample's back and we love it. It's fantastic. You know, people all over this city, all over this state, and probably the world, world who wait those three, four months for sample football to return. And when it returns in such a fine fashion as it has this weekend, it is always such a moment. And it is a joy for us to be able to bring it to you as well. Alan, he goes inside Ford 50. Oh! They all fly. No one had... Even like lug on the ball with their hands, it just sort of fell to the ground. Reynolds kept his feet, but a free kick's been paid. It's going to come back to the bays. Riley Holder yeah. caught one high, I reckon. Riley Holder on the bottom of the ground. And we'll have a chance to get in on the scoring action today. He's been outstanding. We have a new stats leader, and no surprise to anyone, it's Chris Curran. 24 disposals. That shot at goal, given off to Hosey, not taken in the end. You're right. Chris Curran, 24. Matty Allen, 24. It's making my job very, very difficult. Sweet. And the handball to Cleary. Looks for Narco on the lead. That's better from Port Adelaide. Scoreboard's <laughs> gone off again for the second time today. Aiden Turner, no. great tackle from McCarthy, forced the ball over the boundary line. Had the umpire called holding the ball. Max Proud takes the mark in the middle, thumps it long. Hosey direction was being held, I thought. Front and centre stag. And he's wrapped up by Xavier Walsh and we'll have a stoppage. So now pushing for a few more as this contest wears out. Zeus out the back of the pack. Looking for Georgiades. Couldn't take it. Max Proud very happy just to tap it over the boundary line. 28 minutes gone. And seven goals kicked in this final term. So probably at least another minute or so left in the term. Nick Moore got one in the back. Umpire agreed with me. Tried all day, Nick Moore. A handball off to Xavier Walsh. Intercept Mark. Lions. Short to Allen. Allen inside 50 to the lead of Holder. He's taken the mark a couple of metres in from the boundary line. Just inside 50. And a lot of tired players out there. No one leading for him. I've just said, have a ping, have a ping Riley. And that's exactly what he's going to do. From 49 metres. Cool. Gave it a chance. Hit the post. 22-12. Plays Port Adelaide 13-8, 13-6-84, rather. Umpire said play on as that kick came back in. A little bit of a debate out there, but of course he's just going to throw it up in the end. Sweet. 
taps it a long way in the wrong direction. Lovelock on the end of it. Goals again. His third. The one in the first quarter, one in the third, now one in the last. And it is six goals in this quarter, six in the last, and seven in the second. Is that a drop kick goal? You could call it that, I think. He, Off the ground. He reached it at that point. Glenelg again. No, I've liked Lovelock's game. I think he's been important, especially early in the contest. In that first quarter, he was up and about. He, um, he was the reason Glenelg had three goals in the first quarter to start yeah. the game. 17 possessions, three goals for him today. Yeah, he's been excellent. And as you say, assists for a couple of others. Yeah, been very good. I like the game, and I'm sure Darren Reeves will be very happy with Archie Lovelock's game. It's been a hot day in Adelaide. It's cooling down now as the sun sets. And over 5,000 people here today to enjoy Good Friday footy. Twilight footy on Sandville now. And on the AFL app. It's great to have you with us. Thanks to Amy. You know, good friends at Amy supporting community footy. Sweet is absolutely buggered. Kitschke's gone into the ruck for Glenelg. Tried hard all day, Jordan Sweet. Still continues to win the hit out. It's got that one down. Bell trying to, it's Motty Stretch trying to strip it out of there. No, it was Bell. Now Cody Zust. Port with the clearance. Inside forward 50. Scully has to bend down and pick it up. Not his favourite thing to do. Max Proud, hands and knees. Little Hamble forward to Kitsky. Nick Moore. Couldn't find a target. Martini tackled by Zust. And we'll have a ball up just about on the paint of 50 in front of the Glenelg Bar and club here. Can't be long left in this one. Sweet little handball out. Bailey handball into space also. Snook tried to get it. He was swamped by a couple of magpies. But then, as is ever the case with Matty Snook, followed it up with a tackle of his own. Applying the pressure to the very end. Just in front of your sample now, commentary block box sweet wax it on the boot, but the siren sounds. And they will sit top of the table at the end of round one in Premiership Defence Glenelg. They win by 66 points. 23, 12, 150 to 13, 684. The Glenelg faithful. They're hoping for more this year. They're happy with that. As a way to start this year, Bonds. 11 goal win to start the season. 66 points. It's a big win. And in front of 5,007 people, Glenelg get their 24 24, uh, 2024 season off with a flying start. Paddy, before we go. We've got to get uh, your 3-2-1 for the sample now. Mm. Best player award. Yeah, I understand what I have to do. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, a few apologies here. I thought Chris Curran was outstanding today. He didn't He didn't sneak in. He might be unlucky. seen as a bit stiff. That's okay. Manny Snook as well. Thought he was outstanding. Darcy Bailey and John T. Scharenberg also both really good. If we're looking at the Port Adelaide side, I think I think Nick Moore is probably their standout today. Josh Shin, Sin showed a little bit as the game wore on and Mitch Georgiades a little bit going forward. But my one vote goes to Matty Allen in the end. 25 possession, leads all comers, three goals, six marks, four tackles and five clearances. I think he was outstanding today. Two votes to, I need to get a goal kicker in there, Lockie Hosey, five goals. You simply don't win a game like that without your key pillars inside forward 50 that they have and you can't give votes to all three of them so Lockie Hosey gets the gets the two votes for his five goal performance and I thought three vote, votes dealing with the job he was handed Riley Holder outstanding today uh, he was well beaten in the ruck contest themselves but what he was in the end essentially was a fourth on baller as I said a couple of times during the call and uh, got himself 25 possessions um, five marks Eight clearances and uh, six clearances, rather, and five inside 50s. I think that's an outstanding effort.
Thanks to Darren, our cameraman, for looking after us all day. He's put in the hard yards today. Uh, done a fantastic job, as always. And for all the Sandville Now commentary team across uh, Good Friday and last night, it's great to be back. It's great to have you with us. Get down here next week for the state game. The Sandville taking on the VFL. We cannot wait. Thanks for your company. Glenelg running out big winners. We'll see you next time.